Sitting around the ballroom, they're talking about tomorrow When they're taking Johnny away Said he wasn't no good, never done the things that he should That's all the judge had to say He went in the army when he was 18 Crazy young Irish and me Took a kid who was half gone all the way to be wrong with bloodlust in them 16s. His father, he thanks us for coming. Bartender whispers on. All right, we are back. Hold on one second, I gotta turn off the television. Um, all right, so. We got a very special guest here tonight. By the way, it's gonna feel weird for the Patreon guys because we released the other show like the Tuesday night. Yeah, it's almost two weeks. They since, haven't heard since yeah. Patreon had a new episode. They to haven't. To. Yeah, exactly. So I'm sorry to the Patreon people. Well, I'm, I, I'm not sorry because they got it early. But um, anyways, we got a new Patreon member. By the way, my buddy Mark Fadakiaro. You know the story I told about oh, yeah. the Karate Kid? Yes. Yep. Behind Mother's Pizza, fucking learning like Bruce Lee shit. <laughs> That's my guy. He's a Patreon member. Hell Welcome yeah. to the fucking team. Um, Let's go. Okay, so we got a special guest. Billy Silvestri is here. I'm very Ride the unicorn. Here. Thank you for having me. Um, yep, you probably want to get closer to that mic. Yep. Which you would think you know because you are a musician. I'm not. First of all, you're I'm a, not vocalist. a fucking musician at all. <laughs> lead not singer, a vocalist former either. lead singer in a band. Faked it till we didn't make. Don't it. we all? Right. Yes. It's the name of the game. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's that's the name of the game. You're just doing it to get chicks. I mean, everybody knows that's the real reason. Ninety-five percent of guys who get into bands only get into bands because they're like, this could possibly get me laid. Like, and it's not even a sure thing, but there's a chance. You're like, all right, this is a shot for me that I might get laid. Low uh, jobs, right. low that? jobs and mortgages. That's right. I want to give. <laughs> what are you doing anything for? <laughs> I want to give a quick shout out. So we went out to dinner the other night. The Fitzes in the Ahern's. Yeah. Giacomo's, my buddy. Um, my buddy Richie owns that. Jack owns the models. is awesome. He slid us in for a reservation. They were full. Got us in. Um, great service. Yeah. And we ran into a, lot of a corker in the wild. A lot of people. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, my sister was there, everybody. But um, my friend Alicia, yeah. who listens to the show every week, she was like Fitz walking. She was like, is that, is that the guy from the podcast? Um, but our friend Steph was like bitching. Now, I've known Steph since I was little. She was bitching. She's like, you're always talking about her on the podcast, how awesome she is. So, Steph, you're awesome, too. There you go. But Alicia is a fucking, she's like, will you take some notes on my thoughts? And I'm like, let's do it sometime. So, um, anyways, I, I like all input. File those notes right over here. That's right. All input is good input. But they bought us a few drinks. Yeah. Like, I mean, just class acts. You know what Steph, I mean? Steph was a right. Steph Steph's could be a very guest. funny. Yeah, she could be very a guest. funny. Yeah. Don't put any ideas on her head. Uh, <laughs> She That's a great. She doesn't both, listen, anyways. Listen, those two are like when you look up great, like women to have at a party. Like they're one and two, like just perfect. I thought so, they were awesome. Um, yeah, they're great. Uh, we had a great dinner that night. It was an awesome time. Um, we did a couple cob bombs on the way on, when we got back, uh, which was great. Um, real was this, quick, was this the night before you shot the promo for this? And you were like, hey. hey no, hey, no, that was, unfortunately, you, this has I been a long. I felt your hangover through yeah. that video <laughs> this is, immediately. This has been, a, there's a reason I'm drinking a box uh, zero fucking root beer right now. Because I was like, I had one beer today. I got to give a quick shout out. Josh the Iron Worker saved my fucking ass. Sure did. So my sink got clogged because I'm a dummy. 10 cent head shit. I was flushing fucking, uh, first of all, gluten-free crackers, which Maggie for me afterwards are made of almond flour. You don't want to put those down your garbage disposal. More it was like, dude. So when the guys did the basement, they walled everything in. So Wayne's Drains come over. They're like, we can't get past the P-trap, and we're not going to open your wall for you. So I called Jay McGrath. First of all, Jay McGrath gave me some good advice. And then Josh was like, then I got my contractor on the phone, and he's like, yeah, I'll come over. It'll be like 1500 bucks or two grand or something like that. Josh is like, fuck that. And he's, he's Josh's contractor, too. He's like, I'm fucking coming over there. He's like, let's fucking do this. So we went today, and I was like, this isn't going to work. Cuts a hole in the wall. Pat Kane was giving advice to him. Cuts a hole in the wall. Perfect fucking spot. P-trap right there. Took about an hour to get it all cleared out. But Josh, the iron worker, saved the day. You know what I mean? Now, Shit. a lot of people, he's ruined a lot of days in his life, too. So well, uh, this is balance. This is the yeah, Josh you, balance. Like, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. He's, he's um, an absolute peach, that guy. Yeah, he is, he's one of the best. So what an, outlaw, what, a, what an absolute wild card when he's on this show. <laughs> it's so good. And shout out to Jason McGrath. I call him Fickleback. <laughs> <laughs> Fickleback. He looks like that dude. <laughs> Look at this Jay McGrath. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Oh, I'll have to dude. make up a song about that at some point. Um, all right, so real quick. <laughs> Go back. Also, real uh, we I feel like we haven't done this in so long. Lots happened. Michaela, O'Leary, 
Yes. Fucking ordered a whole thing of misguided spirits. Did put you? It her, oh, yeah, nice. put it on her uh, Instagram. Hell yeah. And they shared it on their Instagram. Hell yeah. That's a fucking corker yeah. right there. That's awesome. That's a that's a that's one Dude, of the wild. She's a day one. She is. Yeah, the best rapper. Uh, I think Today. we have uh, ever on the show. We've had to, although we haven't had Prez come on and actually rap. I know. We should have had him. We, we we'll missed do, our he, opportunity. Well, no, he'll come on again. Yeah, of course he will. Yeah, He pays attention to the page, dude. He's yeah, always he like, liking shit and stuff. Um, okay. So anyways, that's that. So we're, we're past that shit. Uh, Fitz, how was the Twisted Fate release for uh, Ferg's beer? Uh, it was good. It was, it was, Billy was there. Yep. Nice. Yep. Stop in uh, real quick. There was a lot of beef is there. You got Donnie with... Uh, the food truck was Denali. there. Den- Denali. Denali. Denali food truck was there. I had a smash burger and a steak and cheese. Yep. That's right. It's called the steak and cheese, Billy. <laughs> uh, Too many words. <laughs> so it was unbelievable. And then tots are on the menu. I'm getting tots. So <laughs> it worked out great. Talking Napoleon yeah, Dynamite over here. Yeah, I put them in my pocket. <laughs> uh, the beer was great. It's called Nighthawk Night and Dragon. Hawk and Dragon yep. from Twisted Fate. And it's a 6.8% Dippa. Uh, no, New England Dippa. Great, great beer. I've had it. Yeah. yeah great Ferg beer. gave me one out of the back of his truck the other day. Nice. Um, and so I'm playing at Twisted Feet on March 2nd. Yep, which is going to be a long weekend, by the way. That's the Wolf Tones. Wolf Tones on Friday. That's them. Dan Connor was asking me if we were going to be there because I, me and Melissa both went to yeah. Twisted Fate that night. Yeah, and I was like, we're going to try to make it. We'll see what happens. We got a lot of yeah, we got a lot going we on. We got a lot um, of kid stuff going on. And you know? also, they got a license because originally, like I think I said on the show, he he was like, "Do you have original music?" Because I don't have the license for like playing like covers. Yeah. Because sometimes they'll come in and like try to. It's the worst. Really? Anyways, they got the license now, so I, I'm going to play whatever Sweet. people want to hear. So that's wild. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. I think most people just don't follow it, but. If they're bagging people in a certain area or whatever, then, you know. Nothing better to do. Yeah, it's it's seriously. Like it, fucking, that's, say it. I know what you're going to say. What's po- it like? Po- like a fucking pocket <laughs> meter. A like meter maid. Like a meter maid, yeah. Of course, the worst people in the world, Fucking right? terrible. Dan yeah. Connor, by the way, gives phenomenal hugs. Like, big flannel, burly man yes. hugs. I, like, took a pregnancy test the next day. I was like, <laughs> dude, am I fucking, am I, is there a bun in the oven from hugging this guy? <laughs> you're fixing for a Dixon. You go around. <laughs> <Honestly, laughs> <right? laughs> yeah, he's handsy and shit. I think his hand was in my back pocket. I mean. <laughs> Dan Connor's one of the best. You I didn't, like him. You didn't stop him. No, absolutely right. not. Okay, you so can't he- stop Dan Connor. Are you shitting me? <laughs> So we all know each other because of the beast page. Let's just say that. No, that's not true. I know Billy from years ago. Mm-hmm. My buddy like, Sam like picks cool me up. Decade yeah, a decade at least. My buddy big Sam picks me up. Guys. Two big soccer yeah, guys me. sitting here right now. Yeah. I was like, I'll go see Arsenal with you. Sure. Like, I really am not a soccer guy. But you, you I was were like, there to drink beers in the morning. And I didn't realize they didn't like serve them until like 1130. So oh, I'm just no. sitting there eating breakfast. We eating Irish breakfast together. Yeah, we ate, it was great. So Billy was the uh, third guy with us. We all drove in together. We ate uh, Irish breakfast together. We had a great time. We did together. We met yeah. at Sam's house in Melrose. That's wow. right. Yep. We drove in together and out. And uh, so I have already known Billy well before this stuff happened. Um, so, and it only made us stronger. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you know, it's like when you banged some destiny. chick back in seventh grade. You know what I mean? It's like you're formed. I wish. <laughs> 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 I mean, I didn't bang anybody in seventh grade except myself. Um, but anyway, so that's the deal. So also, you are well. Let's just let's just give the backstory real quick. Backstory. I do think your back- it up in this room. No, no, no. Your backstory of that picture. You were in a band. Okay, so yeah, in the early two thousands, right? So about nineteen ninety nine, I was at parties often at least like a nineteen year old playing the guitar and just playing like cover songs, and then sometimes just freestyling about the people in the room, and it always went over well at parties. <clears throat> there was a guy there. He was dating another girl that was there. He's a guitar player. He asked me to try out for his band. I go and I try out, and uh, they're like more metal kids, and I was more like a punk kid, like no effects, green day, yeah. rancid, that type of shit. And uh, it didn't work out, and then like six, eight months later, they called me back. They said, hey, we're changing directions. We're going to kind of go with this flow. We think we, we, you know, we can do punk stuff. Let's go. And, uh, and off we go, right? Now, immediately, there's like this chemistry. The, guy, the guitar player sent a song and was like, everybody learn this song. And then we're going to just, and we played it through the first time, all the way through, and there was immediate, like, electricity. It was like, holy shit, this is great. Now, mind you, I'm not a good singer, but I'm a decent front man. Like, I make a crowd do fucking anything that I want, especially a big crowd. Yeah. And this thing just snowballs as, like, a local band would, right? And we start getting shows in Boston, and it starts getting bigger. Now, 
I start getting bad tattoos. I'm wearing <laughs> fucking. And now I can laugh at it. Now that I'm older, I can really. It's absolutely hysterical, and the music's fucking horrible in my opinion. <laughs> it's absolute trash, written by four different people, dragged all over the way, all in different directions musically. It's a train wreck. Plan B is the name. Plan was the name B of the before the morning yeah. after pill. Just so yeah. you know, the contraceptive. <laughs> uh, we were Plan B, right? So we start just kind of locally blowing up, if you will, right? Like, a lot of bands bring 20, 30 kids. We started having 60, 80, 100 kids at all ages shows. Then we started getting city gigs in Boston, 18 plus, 21 plus, and now we're selling out. Middle East downstairs is like 550 people, believe it or not. That's a big deal. Yeah. And Sound we, out and that we, is a big deal. We didn't have like a bi-monthly residency, but every two months, we were there as a headliner, packed the place on a Thursday or a Saturday, yep. sold out. And we did Avalon, Axis, Harper's Ferry, like CBGBs in New York City. Yep. Then we toured up and down the coast. We're thinking we're going to be, like, big. Because when you start doing music and it's decent and it's popular and people are going to the shows, all your friends are your worst fucking enemies. Because they're all like, this is it. You're going to fucking make it. We weren't good enough to make it, first of all. Okay? But we had a lot but, of But just for reference, because I was in a lot of bands. Mm -hmm. For reference to people who don't know, like, being able to draw... Once every two months locally and sell out the Middle East downstairs is a big fucking Incredibly deal. Hard. Because here's the thing. It's the truest thing they ever say. Your friend's going to come to your first two shows, yep. and then they're never going to fucking yeah. come again. So you got to get fans at that point. So that's a big deal. Well, the big thing was girls, too. Girls would come to our shows. Right? It was like four like kind of cute young guys in their fucking 20s, right? And throwing after parties afterwards. So people would come, bring groups of people, and they'd bring girls. And then they would come the following week and bring their girlfriends. So we used to play with a band called the Sweatpant Boners. Yeah. And Robbie Rhodes. Yeah, name. Robbie Rhodes. Yeah, we used to play shows with them quite a bit. And he would, he's kind of like a comedian act, yeah. more than a musical yeah. act. Like one of their songs was Pee With Your Father. Yeah. It was all about peeing with your father when you were a little kid. <laughs> or Sorry Your Cat Has Ass Cancer was another one. Yeah. Was a big hit with the crowd. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I we, put a baby, I was at, uh, there's oh, a bunch of great it ones. It goes on and on. But he would get, would get on the mic, and they would be right before us, because he drew well also, and he'd be like, make sure you get fucking checked for STDs, ladies. Plan B's up next, you know, like, like destroy us. Destroy us. I used to wear a ball necklace, a silver ball necklace. Okay? I know exactly what you're talking about. Bro, but I didn't just wear the fucking thing to, like, the shows. I wore it everywhere. It was part of your identity. It was part of my identity. There's pictures of me at, like, fucking weddings where I'm in, like, a... Like, a, I'm dressed up or like a funeral, whatever it is. I'm dressed up, half suit, whatever, with a ball necklace on. Yeah. And anal beads. Like, you know, forever. My friends would be like, nice anal beads. But I was fucking full send on it. And the pop punk, punk, the pop punk thing blew up. Yep. And Blink got huge. And then they started putting those type of, that type of music in, like, uh, you know, all these movies. Yeah, know? that's how I, like, kind of learned about it. Yeah, like American Pie had a yeah, bunch yeah. of that yeah. shit. Some 41, all that shit. So we get swept up. Totally fucking in it. And eventually it ends. We all, you know, meet girls and want to make money and this and that. But looking back, bro, and our biggest song. But you were on the Warped Tour. Gee, we only did like two dates. That's still, still a big but fucking deal, dude. Yeah, like we were. Like, shoot, it's fucking huge. Sick. Maybe you should have like, mentioned that. We were backstage with the Boss Tones. Dude, we did. Um, another thing was cool. We did the WAF local music show. Carmelita used to have yeah, the yeah. show. Yeah. And we performed live on there. And we gave away an autographed dildo, right? <laughs> now, all these years later, it grossed me out. This lady that was like 48 won it. She calls in. She's so excited. And we're like, dude, 48-year-old lady, what's she doing? Now I get it. Now I'm older. <laughs> and I'm like, that lady's the fucking best, bro. But somewhere out there, she there's was, a lady. She, no, she was the best. She, yeah, she was. She's probably she's passed gone on. Now. She's probably <laughs> gone. But I hope she fucking pleasured herself with my autographed name on a big rubber cock. Because yeah. she probably got buried some with her. Dude, it just, yeah. it just for reference, too, like, because, well, like I said, one, right, Fitz? there's all these different <laughs> levels of, like, gigs that you get you know like we started out we ended up being like one of the bands that would open for a big band from out of town at harper's because or a place like that because at that point they know you can draw so like they harper's they know you a can fun room right and harper's is my favorite because the mute the, yep. yeah, the sound guy because when you start out you're doing the fucking sound you yep. know what i mean and it never works yep. and you're always trying to fucking make it work and when you go to Harper, like just like what happened to us at the ia I, yeah. I, 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 I oh, solved yeah. that fucking problem <laughs> but then you get to like harper's you're like they're like Go talk to the sound guy. You're like, there's a fucking sound guy yes, here? Dude. And the guy's nasty. And dude, like, everything's perfect. When we played The Paradise for the first time, I didn't want to stop sound checking. Yeah. Because it was like, oh my God, this sounds so yeah. fucking good. It's totally yeah. different. Like, like they have your sound. They're doing the sound that they're going to do for a big touring band. But you're getting it. You know yep. what I mean? And you're not used to sounding like that. You know what I mean? So everybody can hear everything. You know how it is. You go to a small gig, can't hear the vocals or whatever it is, right? Yep. But that, that was like... When you get to that level, you stop being like, oh, shit. Dude, like, we peaked. Let me just tell you how we peaked, and then we can move off of this. But we we peaked at this show called Skate Fest. It was at the Worcester Palladium in the big room, right? That's a lot of people in that room. 
and we had to local bands there were like six of us that were invited you had to sell tickets we sold all the 120 tickets they gave us and my bass player who was sort of our manager was like we need more tickets and they were like what and they're like yeah he's like can you give me like the same amount i think we can sell them out and they were like are you being serious and he was and then he started negotiating he's like if we sell all these out can we get a better slot? Because it was with all these bands like My Chemical Romance, Coheed and Cambria, like I can go on on New Found yeah. Glory. Yeah. All what? these bands <laughs> were, were like good sized bands yeah. for the, that scene, right? And so we show up at the show and he hands the lady like $6,000 over, even, we even sold more because he had to get more from like their intern. Long story short, we blew away every fucking band. Then he gave the sound guy 50 bucks um, and got us like, the big band sound, you know, yep. like because that guy doesn't start working until it gets later sure. in the evening, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and they gave us a three o'clock slot. Now the band before us was more like the Strokes or like it was like that garage. Yeah, style. yeah. They were the only band that didn't fit that pop punk emo screamo bullshit, right? And they made a mistake. They they had a packed house in front of them and the kids weren't moving. They weren't into it because they, they weren't the type of music they went to yeah. see. Right. And he started shitting on the crowd a little bit, saying, "Hey, sorry, we're not dressed in fucking studded bracelets and this and that. all things I'm wearing, by the way." <laughs> okay. And, and, you know, high socks and all this, like, fake punk rock bullshit scene. He's basically shit on their culture. Yeah. And they're like, it's an all-ages show. They're like, you know, 15 to 25, and they're pissed. We were next. So I'm a pretty good, like, like, I'm a soccer coach, right? Yeah. So I'm, my team talks, I put a lot into them, right? This guy inspires me with his fucking <laughs> posts. But anyway, about, about coaching football. He really does. Um, and so I'm the guy, like, getting everybody together. Like, we warm up our vocals, this and that, and we're about to take the stage. And I gave a fucking Braveheart speech where I looked at all my best friends, my brothers in the eyes. I'm like, look, we're playing in front of a packed house. My Chemical Romance is on in like two bands. This band just shit on the whole fucking audience. They're not feeling it. This is going to play right into our hands if we come out and hit them with a fucking smack in the mouth right now. And dude, it was only like a 24-minute set. We were electric. Like, Hell it was yeah. the best we ever played. I had the whole crowd I'm fucking up right doing now. Dude, I got the whole crowd was doing everything I asked them to fucking do. And we walked off. And it was like, oh my God, what just happened? It was the, there's no way to describe, I'm getting chills. That electric feeling though that you get when you're taking the stage or comedy or whatever it may be, that adrenaline, you can't replicate that in most parts of real life. And this is in a huge room. If you've ever been to the Worcester Palladium, it's a big room. Mm -hmm. And it was like kids were crowd surfing like crazy. It was fucking, we we peaked, but we just didn't know it, right? It's crazy because I know that feeling. Because I play Candy Crush, and every <laughs> once in a while I beat one of those hard levels, and I get the chills, and I'm like, "This is what it must feel like to be good at something." Not gonna lie, it's like when you get a victory in like COD or Fortnite or whatever, you get that quick little dopamine. But this is like that times a million, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it uh, last the whole yeah, time. it was. I'll never forget that feeling for the rest of my life. Yeah. And my son is ten now, right? So, like for example, Fun he, age. he knew we were. Co- it's awesome. Yeah. He knew I was going on a podcast, right? And he thought about it for like a couple hours and he thought it was the coolest shit in the world. And he legit, because I'm on, Rogan's on a lot on my headphones or, you know, on the TV or whatever yep. it may be. And he was like, Dad, you're going on a podcast like that, like that world famous one that you watch all the time, to- all the time. You're like, exactly. It, it was, son. <laughs> it was the, it, and it reminds me of he he doesn't really understand the band. Like, like he's like, Dad, you were famous in a band. I'm like, no, I was not famous. Yeah, for being yeah, in a yeah. band. And, I, and, and he'll ask me, were you a rock star? No. But I did live a, like a rock star lifestyle for yeah, like five, six it. fucking years. You, you, yeah. Like when you, here's the thing too. As, as close to as you can get. Yeah, yeah and here's the thing. When you have a band that's fucking super tight, that feeling, yes. you also can't explain that. I, I only thing I could imagine, but I've never you been that good at being sports. Being in a band with someone? Being in a band that is super tight playing wise. So brother. Like meaning like you guys yeah. sound so tight. That, because you're not always like that with bands. Like no. you get the wrong drum or whatever. But like when you have that feeling, it's like, it's like you're on drugs. Yeah. Like you're like, you're fucking Flying. You we know rented I mean? a room awesome. in Somerville at this place. I forget what it was called, but it was all ba- it was a band building more or less. It was in Somerville. We, we practiced four nights a week for years, dude. I, and I'm coming from either you know Peabody or Gloucester at that time. Um, we took it real seriously. We put a lot into it and everything. I love that we did it, but it's when you're in a band with three of your best, they become your fucking brothers. You're on the road washing your dick in a McDonald's bathroom because you don't have money for a hotel. You become brothers, right? Dude, like... You, it's like a relationship though with your significant it's, other. It's yes. the best way to describe it. You get like three wives or three girlfriends because yeah. you don't always agree. So yeah. you go through all sorts of bullshit and creative differences, but they're they're like my best friends. If I'm in a fucking jam, even if I don't see these guys for like two years, which, which happens because we all get kids or a couple of us do. 
like they, they'll be right there for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're my brothers. It's it's awesome. It, it's it works. Yeah, it works the other way sometimes too, where it's like uh, just like being in a relationship with a, with a, a guy or a girl. It's like you start to you could fucking grade on each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's a very like creative it's things like that. It's nobody's really right. Right. But you think you're right. You know what I mean? That guy. So anyways. And but, after the band okay. broke up, dog, like I'm thinking to myself, you know, like it's it's, it's kind of like a breakup. Yeah. Because you're kind of pissed at each other that like this, you're all letting go of this dream together. Yeah. And it took me years to laugh at it. Now, though, that I'm older, dude, we can all laugh at it. We went to the Rusty Can the other night. That's when I saw him. I stopped in real quick at Ferg's Brewery thing, his beer thing. And, uh, oh, man, the memory lane that you have with, like, your brother. It's like guys that played football with their sure. football buddies Yeah, or same thing. It's yeah. special. You yeah. know, it's like, yeah. I appreciate it. I'm grateful for it. Yeah, yeah. And you, like like you said, you, generally speaking, like, keep in touch with those people. And, like, you shared something pretty cool. You know what I mean? And so the last thing I want to say about it is we had the song called I Fucked Your Girlfriend, right? And it was, like, the one we closed the show with because the fucking fans loved it. Like, they loved it. The first time I had to play I Fucked Your Girlfriend, which you can find it on Spotify. I can send it to you guys after the show so you can't wait. But the first time I had to play it in front of my mother, <laughs> live, because yeah. my mother only went to like three shows, God rest yeah. her soul, I, I struggled. I was like, I can't believe I got to play this in front of my fucking mom. I mean, I sucked it up and got through it, but yeah, well, it wasn't the proudest moment. So I, I do have one question, though, right? So I actually don't mind that genre of music. Mm-hmm. And I haven't listened to you. I know your story because, like, talking to these guys or whatever. Did you have that same voice that every other, like, punk band has? Oh, man, I wish we queued up I Fucked Your Girlfriend to play it, but basically, similarly. But what? Yeah, like, like shitty like, Green Day. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like, I listen to so like much he, Green he's Day gonna and Weezer his and nose. shit. I, uh, yeah, like, nasally yeah, yeah. a little. And <laughs> yeah, it, it, there's an acoustic track that's so fucking painful for me to listen to. The acoustic guitar is beautiful, yep. but I'm singing it. Now, I'm not a great singer, so you shouldn't be singing fucking acoustic tracks because you're completely exposed. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And it's so bad. Yeah. And I'm so nasally at parts. As uh, as a great electric guitar player, I watched a video the other day talking about when somebody just has to play acoustic guitar alone. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, finger style or something. He's like, I mean, they're going to know what you had for lunch today. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, they're going to know you're, every... Like, you're, you're not... You're totally totally fucking run. exposed. No way yeah. to run. Like, like, you play electric guitar, like... Plug in a couple dirt pedals and like start hitting it and like it's gotta sound cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but anyways, oh, last thing. Yes. Every once in a while we get a royalty check from being on Apple Music and Spotify and shit. Oh yeah. And we, we think that yeah every once in a while but we think that somebody's there's so many Plan Bs out there. Oh yeah. There's like a Latin American boy band that's real fucking popular. I think people are trying to download that fucking album or buy it or whatever it may be back when it was on iTunes. But we would get checks like thirty five bucks. Yeah. One time it was like hundred and twenty five bucks. We yeah. For Mexican food. You know what happened to me was the band <laughs> that I was in stupid. was called American Thread. Mm-hmm. And we had a couple albums. Then, like, we just like, then I was just like, fuck this, I'm getting too old. And anyways, I was already old. But this guy, Tim Montana, who's like a country guy, came out with a song called American Thread. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that. And all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, people are really finding this music. I, <laughs> like, I got one of those checks. You know what I mean? I'm like, holy shit. And realize people That's are like, awesome. see the fucking song I try to download? Right. What the fuck is this? You yeah, know what I mean? I, I just wonder how many, like, South American. 14 year old girls were trying to listen to like this boy band from down there and they're getting my shitty yeah. pop punk shit yeah. from the early 2000s yeah. instead. <laughs> Thanks for your money. Ah, uh, man. Um, That's actually a cool fucking story, dude. It's a great story. You, ma- you made it. Yeah. You right. made it. And you know what? We made it enough for like the best memories ever. I don't regret it. Put it that way. Dude, I, then I went, got into technology sales afterwards. My sister worked for a tech company. And I was working at, I was managing a Pacific somewhere, mostly to give out my CDs to kids. We used to go to shows on Lansdowne Street and just give out free CDs. Did you yeah. still have the anal beads all, around your all neck? Oh, we did, always. I wore those, <laughs> those anal beads are in every fucking photo for like a decade. <laughs> it's awful. But yeah, anyhow. Uh, yeah, and like I said, like you said too, it's like, you know what the thing is? It's in a way, okay, now you have a good life, you have a, you have a family, right? You, you get a house, you live in Gloucester, it's all awesome. There's a world in which you, you kind of make it. Which could be the worst thing in the world, but yes. kind of make it. I mean, you got a you got a song on MTV, you have a hit, right? A minor hit, you have a bad deal with your record label. You're still trying to push because you're like, we can get one, you know. Yeah. And the time comes and goes. Like, you'll see it, dude. You'll see, you know, you'll see some band that you're like, I forgot about those guys coming through town. They're playing at the fucking, you know, they're playing at Mix Three Sixty. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like it's a tough life. Dispatch, you know, I mean? you know the band Dispatch. You ever heard of yes, that? State of Radio? Yeah. Chad Ernstrom, who was in that band, he's guest tracks on one of our songs called Bandwagon. Yeah. Um, great, super nice guy. Wicked hippie, by the way. He recorded yeah. the, in the studio, the booth before I did my vocal tracks. No deodorant, like real hippie. Yeah. <laughs> it fucking stunk in there forever. Gross. If he's listening to this, God bless him. Great musician. Um, that was a cool moment for me because Dispatch was a kind of a big band around. Yeah. Here. 
you know, at the time. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad we did it. I look back at it, and for any young musicians out there, this is my advice, right? From a guy who thought he might make it and then didn't. Get a manager. Get somebody who knows the industry. We thought we were like kind of prima donnas. We yeah, thought we, yeah, we got yeah. this all ourselves. We did our own website. We recorded our own album. Don't fucking do everything yourself. You're not great at everything. Yeah. Let someone record your record. Pay the money for a producer, but get a manager and and someone who knows the industry because yeah. you're not going to be able to navigate those waters as a 21 year old kid. No. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, real good advice. You know, like yeah, and get a lot of hot chicks to your shows. You know what I mean? Hot That's chicks was fucking distracting, to be completely honest yeah. with you. They were, like, everywhere. Yeah. I had a girlfriend for, like, you know, a couple years. For the first couple years of the band, she came to every show, and she was very pretty. Yeah. And all these other girls that went to the show didn't like her because she was the singer's fucking girlfriend. Yeah. And she was insecure, so she would cry backstage at fucking shows or, like, in the bathroom. Somebody like, yo, your girlfriend's crying. I'm like, I'm just, get, just getting ready to go on to paradise. Yeah. And I'm like, she's crying in the bathroom. I don't fucking time for this. We break up. We'll do once we broke up. There were just girls everywhere because they had been coming to the shows. If my wife listens to this, nothing <laughs> happened. We went for ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, yeah, I always say that's like I got into it to like meet chicks and then like literally met my wife at one of our first shows and then like never met another chick. You know what I mean? So yeah, I won't I say that I did out. it for that. It to out. be completely genuine, like with you, I really music. Like when I first got like a seat, a disc man. My life changed. Music hit me. Like, my older brother, Danny knows him. He's nine years older than me. We shared the same bedroom. It was like Def Leppard, Motley Crue, Bon Jovi posters, shit like that. It was all that type of music, which I do love because of my older brother's influence, right? But I needed my own scene. And when the 90s alternative came out with, like, Nirvana, Weezer, like, all that shit came out. Like, the Blue Weezer record, for some reason, Dude, you got, hit me I like a... I wanted to talk about this last 30 seconds. like a fucking train. <laughs> like a train. Yeah. And I, was in it, I was like, I want to be in a band because I love this so much. And then I found more music. And girls came along with it, and that was awesome. Yeah. But that... It's really you, just a byproduct of what you're The really shows like, it was the first time when you're yeah. playing a show that you, all of a sudden girls are, like, interested in you when they're not before, and you're like... Why? Yeah. But, you know, that piece came later. But you I know, just the, loved my own style of music instead of, like, you know, being grandfathered into my brother's shit, and then I just wanted to be in a band. I've said this line before because uh, San- Kyle Santana said it. It's my favorite line. He's like, I, I tell women, like, that I meet at shows. I'm like, I can't make your body feel like my what my music does to your soul. <laughs> and it's so fucking true because, like, You'd be like, oh, this guy's hot. He, he's in this fucking awesome band. It's like, I'm the most disappointing lay ever. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? I still need, a fucking, worst I need to my wife it. to draw me a map to get to her clip, for fuck's sake, bro. Uh, two things, Billy, right? So, for one, you just mentioned your brother, right? Every time I'm in this particular place and they have touch tunes, I know your brother's in there because he's playing one of those bands on the fucking, on the touch tunes. Yep. I'm not even kidding. Yep. Like, I know, I'm like, rich enough, dude. Biggest you know? Van Halen fan you've ever met. <laughs> like, it's, secondly... Mostly a hip hop guy, right? Mm-hmm. Weezer's blue album is top five for me. It's yeah. unbelievable. Danny and I have this weird thing where we're from the same area, and there's things that we really fucking disagree on, yeah. like strawberry frosted mini wheats in the movie <laughs> Life being drafted it's at all. Unbelievable. But then the Both kid also will draft a gem. Golden Grams, most unbelievable. underrated cereal, unbelievable. probably on the Golden fucking Grams plan. is very solid. I, love Golden, Golden Grams. I love Golden Grams. Yeah. <clears throat> Johnny, yeah, Johnny, album. Johnny kicks over here. For Christ's sakes, me? Yeah, corn pops. No, corn, corn pops. pops. Not terrible. Not even corn pops is such a Ferg. I mean, um, Ferg. Sorry, uh, got my mind on North Shore beef. Such a fit. Because you were staring at him. Such a fits move. <laughs> It's it's and it's a quality cereal, but it that's, is. It's that's so good. That's dude. a stay at home safe pick in my opinion. I don't know if I'm drafting a top five, but I call him in the North Shore beef group. I call him in the mod chat the foundation. Yeah, he's like the foundation. He's he like, is. He's the trust. He's a solid dude. Like if I needed to talk to one of you guys. From this chaotic, yep. you know, food page, I'm calling him saying, "Hey, Joe, I got a problem." Yeah, like, what do you think about this? And he's gonna give me rock solid advice. That's the foundation. Yeah, he's gonna tell yeah. you to go get a bowl of corn pops. I wouldn't even be in this all. room if it wasn't for this knucklehead. I met him in a group called Breakfast Sandwich Battle Royale. Okay, <laughs> there were these three knuckleheads that stuck out: him, BP Hammers, and Dan Bob. And then eventually, he was trying to get me over to Beefs. So I didn't want to go. I, I just caught a couple really? looks like at it. I was, so listen, I was watching his videos, and I was like, this kid, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a scout. Yeah, you're a talent I, I, <laughs> Literally, really yeah, I'm nah, looking for talent, and I'm like, you got to come here. You, you would shine this place. You would do great here. And I told him, I was like. Multiple times. Go to Beefs, because it's a huge audience, and you would fucking kill. Yep. And he was like. I wasn't into beefs like at the 30, time. He's like, 30,000, that's a lot of people. I don't know. And like, you would just oh, like. Oh, I was trying to rebuild my career. I'd had a hiatus from, you know, my profession. Um, and then, honestly, you know, Breakfast Sandwiches got under like 1,000 people. And then there's North Shore Cheesesteaks was my other one where we vibed. Me yeah. and BP Hammers and Dan Bob. And they were all, <clears> look at their personas. Big, 
tall, massive, burly, fucking bearded, and they're all shit talking like crazy. Now, mind you, I joined the shit when the bots were going wild and just banning everyone. I got banned for, in Breakfast Sandwich Battle Royale for calling somebody. I literally said these words: "Silly bacon makes goose. everything better." You silly goose, and I got I caught a ban. Okay, silly goose. Silly How does that goose, even happen? Bro. I makes don't know. No sense. But. This guy was trying to get me to beefs, but it was I was honestly a little intimidated. I don't look and act like everybody on there. I can pronounce my fucking R's. I went I was lived in New Hampshire for some years, so I don't have just I have both accents, kind of like yeah. the fucking dude in the departed. Yeah. And <laughs> drop and, your eyes. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. That's literally me. And I have to for the, my profession and all that shit. But I was a little intimidated because they're also like real vulgar with each other to the point where they get banned. And some of the shit that they were saying, I was like, I don't really fully want to be associated with this. It's a little too fucking much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. I'm get eaten alive in this fucking place. Yeah. And, uh, you and, do very well. And But that, you know what I did? <laughs> I sat back and I spectated. And there were personas in this page. And this is one thing that North Shore Beeps is very good at. Coming up with these fucking characters somehow, okay? And the whole thing, it's got its own culture. It's our sandwich, kind of like it's our buffalo wings. It could expand. The whole thing's exciting to me. And I didn't eat beefs for a lot of years. I got a couple really awful gray ones from places that had no business serving beefs, yeah. and I didn't know the game had changed until Danny Gillis, Dan Bob, Hammers, Fitzy, a couple others, okay, that really stuck out. When they would do their reviews, they took such pride in it and were passionate about our sandwich. I felt like this weird sense of internet community with the sandwiches from here, right? And I didn't like Ferg at first. I thought he was a fucking cuck. I was just like, and I, did, I thought Mandy Berg was a real person. <laughs> and, and that was his, I'm like, there's a fucking... Facebook page, which I'm on all the time, Facebook. Now there's a page I can go to where a girl, Mandy Bird, and her boyfriend, Andy Fur, <laughs> came up with this fucking thing. And I love it. And there's all these crazy motherfuckers. This dude, right away, one of the first reviews I watched, Pigeon Come. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I don't do yeah. mayo on beefs yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. And our review, by the way, top three of my personal favorites. Oh, it's great. It's not close. Natural energy. We said that one of us said James River is the dom dominant condiment. It rolled off perfectly. <laughs> I just, I loved it. It felt like I was home. Oh, because he's from, and I lied to him. I said I was from Malden. Yeah, yeah. You're I'm a Medford guy, right? I'm from Medford, but my parents split when I was 10 <laughs> and we moved to New Hampshire. So I didn't go to high school. I wasn't a Mustang, right? Yeah. But my whole family, grandmother, aunt, all them, they're all Malden. Yeah, so, yeah. It, so, and they just happen to move. You got roots. It's all Malden. Yeah, yeah. It's all fucking Malden. You got the roots. Anyway, um, but yeah, dude, this guy right here was pushed me into the whole thing. Then, I end up running for this whole MVB unicorn yeah, tour yeah. crown thing. And by the way, this is for you guys. This is the original mask that I that I wore. I want this to live in the studio. This is Sparkle Jizz. Oh, Giz. baby. Look at that. This is Sparkle Jizz. You take <laughs> good care of her. Gift. I got a new one now. She's more rainbow. What a gift. So, yeah, this is for you That's guys. That's incredible. Talk about an electric factor. He's taking advice from Craig. Bring a gift if you're coming on. 100%. Yeah. I'll tell you so what. I, as soon as he invited me, I started, you know, Ride the Unicorn was born because my girls, I would get, instead, yeah. of, instead of piggybacks, we do unicorn rides. That's just what we do because they're all decked out in unicorn gear. Yeah. So that was like, that's how that persona was born. And I needed to come in with something soft and a little flamboyant to mess with all these hardos that were going to come at me with their fucking, all their typos and fucking bullshit. Like, honestly, Adam Jump Jump Town, he has no idea. If I leave a lasting impression on that guy's life, I want to teach him you are versus you. <laughs> so luck. someday, luck. No, I'm going to fucking do it someday. I'm not going to bore everybody and explain it right now, but I know he's going to listen. But I'm happy to in a beef up with him. That's what we're doing. Dude, listen, I spent my morning yesterday, I was so, like, my buddy's home from Ireland, he comes home over two years, he's one, he's like one of my best friends. I went, I, I was overdone, I overdid it, let's just put it that way. And I'm sitting there yesterday morning, I'm looking at a video of fucking Adam Jump Town cleaning out a horse stall mm -hmm. for like a half hour. And yeah. I'm like, fuck am I doing with my life, you know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm just like cracking up, being like, this fucking kid, like. He's become the most lovable character. I give that kid so much credit, if we're staying on the beef topic, because... When he came in, I, I, I showed you guys my notes for this. There's two reasons why I'm in this room, right? Yeah. Fitz, obviously, we've kind of covered yep. that. He, he ushers me towards greatness as much as he can. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Jump Jump Town was starting a review on the page around the same time that I did, mm -hmm. okay? And I started seeing people saying MVB on his posts. And I was like, this fucking lunatic <laughs> is going to wear this crown? No, he's fucking not. I want to be first. And then I was first. But let me just tell you this. And we, we have like a friendly rivalry, him and I. Yeah. When you meet him in real life, you know, he kind of has like the character, like the jump, Adam jump, jump down character yeah. a little bit. It's not, for third, me, third I person. didn't embrace it right away. I was like, this guy sucks. I thought it was the best thing I've ever seen in my See, life. See, and that's the thing. Some people love it. When I met him in person, you start to figure it out and get to know him. Oh, yeah. The dude is legit, real deal. Genuine. Aces. Hey, talk Aces. about, hey, talk about yeah. a fucking serious hugger. 
Oh, he's he gives, a big he gives hug. Good hugs. And he's an A-plus handshake, too. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And, he's a, and you don't realize, like, we, somebody said this the other day, but, like, Jump's a big dude. Like, he's a big, big dude. Yeah. 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 Except for he, me and you. He picked me up. I thought Danny was the first time short. I met Jump was at uh, <laughs> Anthony's in Reading. Yep. Got out of my car. He jumped out of his car and he literally hugged me and picked me up. Yeah. For no reason. I'm not a, I'm not a, a little no, guy. Dude. Just no. out of pure dominance. No. I'm not, I mean, <laughs> we're. I'm not a little guy. He yeah. picked me right up. Yeah. yeah. I met He's him at Laundie's for, for a, a unicorn ride, like during that whole yep. fucking contest or whatever. And him and I in Laundie's, he basically breaks the door as he's coming in like he always does. Yeah. He scares the shit out of the employees. <laughs> out of everybody. It, out of everybody. And then I'm going to blow up unicorn costume, and he's holding me <laughs> to shoot the review. We did, like, the, the uh, Titanic scene, <laughs> and uh, that was just the review. I just shot it through TikTok, and... But the guy was the sweetest fucking dude. I like root for Adam way more than I ever thought I would when I first. Uh, but he motivated me. Oh, he's the best. And, he motivated. And he's the best. To this day, I will stand by this. He has the best video I've ever seen on the page. Oh, this is where I was going. The K one. Oh my god. This was the turning point all right, so, uh, with all so, the people that didn't so love For people to understand what was happening, just to give context to people who aren't from around here, don't aren't on the page. They the MVB is the most valuable beef, or it comes up every once in a while. Sometimes they give it as a contest. Sometimes it's just awarded. Al Delano is currently the MVB, well deserved. Yes, sir. Um, Jump was going versus this woman named Kay. All the way Kay Hathaway. All the way Kay Hathaway. Who I had endorsed against him. Yes. <laughs> uh, we definitely went for, tried to get people to vote for Adam Jump. on this yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. show. Nothing against Kay. It was just. So what hey, Adam did was. Jump was our guy. In his final video, he didn't win, but he, sh- By he like three dressed votes. up yeah. as this woman. And one, it was like. Vote. Yeah. Was it one vote? Yeah. yeah. He killed it. He looked exactly like her. The, the fucking voice, voice was probably on point. the best review I it on was, the page. I, it's it's, it's just, the best I, thing I've ever seen. It, it, it was, was awesome. It was totally unexpected. It, yeah. it, it came out of left field. He My, had a wig on. He had his fucking nails done. Yep. He used the her high bitch. Like, yeah. kind of annoying. Yeah. He, yeah. Had, he had fake he eyelashes. He cut her head off yeah. and then drop kicked it across <laughs> the internet. <laughs> yes. It, it was, it was yep. absolute gold. I kind of had, I was, I liked it, uh, Jump Town, but I wasn't on board with him. That moment, we... Dude, a bunch yeah, of people in the team, mod chat team switched jumped fucking on, teams yeah. immediately after that yeah. video. Yeah. I like that. But I stuck with K. All right, so here's <laughs> what we're going to do real quick. Now, I am playing at, are they calling it Ferg Fest or is it Beef Fest or whatever Ferg it is? Ferg Fest. Ferg Fest. Fest. That conceited son of a bitch. I, call, I, I joke, I'm like, I call it Me Fest. I'm like, yeah. when's Me Fest? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, all right, but now my band is playing Converse Outlet. You're going to get up and play a couple songs with us for sure. Um, okay. That's going to happen. Um, I'll sing back up. Yep. And, but in the <laughs> oh, meantime... Sorry. I uh, I was working on a North Shore Beef song because I feel like it. We need a song for it now. I asked Billy already; he's gonna do a little backup singing. Let's go! Right. I'll do the best I can. I I'm ready. You You're recording this front row seat. Hey, let's go! By the way, we do have a lot of people that uh, that listen across the country. You gotta get your hands on one of these sandwiches, dude. We yeah, talk- I'll tell you what. I, I I beefed today. I had uh, I went to Mike's in Saugus. Um, after I did my Sunday spins with the boys. And, uh, yeah, it was a f- working man's beef. It was a fine beef. You know what I mean? They lost their fastball a little they bit. They definitely lost their fastball. That said, uh, uh, it was very serviceable. What's the, for the people, what's the best beefery close to this pod- <laughs> podcast studio? Nothing good. Mike's is probably the best thing, Sorry, Right, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Day I raised my head, dragged my hover ass out of bed, tried to blow off the headache and the existential dread. And I jumped in my truck, cause I don't give a fuck. Today's not for salads or any healthy stuff. Give me a North Shore beef, sauce and mayo cheese. Preferably served by Greek. Greek. Give me a North Shore beef. Make it a gangbang, please. Onion rings, some horsey. There's a river that goes by the name of Big Bad James. I like that. Once you've been baptized in it, you won't be the same. Never the same. Once you've seen the light, this will be your plight. 
person drew a beeps morning, noon, and night. One more time. Give me a North Shore beef, sauce and mayo cheese. Beautiful. That's gonna be uh, it's gonna take the world by storm. By the way, for the people at home who aren't from around here and don't know about a gangbang, a gangbang <laughs> is the name of a type of beef. Yes, <laughs> it is uh, five way. Five way. It's a whole yes. culture here. The beef, it's yes. like beef on whack or uh, Italian, Chicago 100%. Italian style. It's beef. Way better than all those things. Oh okay. yeah, bam, bam, bam. blows out of the water. Yeah. Bam, bam. I mean, it's Touch our sandwich, mile. so of course we're gonna say that. You know, those people that they, they feel the same way though. Yeah, yeah but I've those had pages. I've had those Italian beefs. It's all right. I, they, yeah, but they, they would wrong. say the same thing because it's not part of your culture. Yeah, but they're idiots. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Fuck those people. Yeah. They are idiots. <laughs> Anybody listening Dummies. to Buffalo or Chicago can yeah. suck one. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're drafting. I'm this so is your idea, out. Billy, and it's an awesome idea. Can I set the table for this real quick? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. By the way, real quickly, when I met Danny Gillis at the Christmas party, I expected him to be short. He gave me Joe Pesci vibes from his <laughs> reviews. <laughs> The most fucking insulted look on his face. I just met him, and I was like, oh my God, you're way taller than I thought. He was like, the fuck's that supposed to be? <laughs> like, immediately, he was m- fucking hey. more. He's like, do I keep short guy energy? <laughs> Fer- Ferg got the same exact thing. He goes, oh my God, I thought you were going to be short. Everyone's taller. And I go, well, you look. really do have a fucking dump truck head in real life. <laughs> yeah, it's the biggest head you've ever seen. All right, so when I, when I got invited on the podcast, which I'm incredibly honored, and I got to say this. This is my favorite local fucking mass, mass hole podcast. It really has an, its own identity. And I don't want to blow everybody here, even though I kind of do right now because he just played the guitar in front of me. <laughs> um, I really think that f- you guys were great. And when Fitz joined, I think you, you guys have talked about this. It was like a missing puzzle piece, right? 100%. Yes, you know, like absolutely. Fitz was the puzzle piece that has the hole. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. You yeah. guys were the piece with like the fucking pack ahead, yeah. and you would just like slowly yeah. write in as he guest spotted, and then he got here. It's got great chemistry. I fucking love the. It's the. It's like the what my wife always says to me. It's like the perfect size. You know, like the big ones hurt. This is yeah. this is a three hour podcast, dude. This is perfect. How you guys do it. So I, love I fully it. agree with Billy in that that uh, assessment? assessment, but I I don't think I'm the whole. It's cool that you think of me as the You're whole. Absolutely the whole. Oh, thank you. Dan, I appreciate they're it. They're taking turns, and Danny's fucking <laughs> coaching. He's coaching Brendan on what Let's to do. Go! Brendan's playing a guitar to get Danny going when it's his turn. Um, so I travel for work sometimes, and I had to go to this office in Provo, Utah, and take this sales team out and take them out for dinner and all this stuff. We love Utah on this podcast. Bro, yeah. I had never been to Utah, by the way. Fucking spectacular. Beautiful. The mountain ranges around you, right in the city of A lot of, of cults. Provo. Well, I didn't know much about. The, Mormonism. The Mormonism thing, <laughs> right? And uh, I learned a lot. And I sent you guys a link to soaking. Yes. Yeah. They like don't do intercourse, but they'll like put it in and not move it, and they just call it soaking, right? So that's how the kids get away with it before they get married or whatever. But it's the wife culture that got me. Like, uh, so this the idea when I when I got invited and I was of course stoked to be here. I was like, one of the ideas I had was to draft movie or TV wives, um, the characters, not necessarily the actresses. Doesn't matter. And, like, picture you going home to your Mormon cul-de-sac and you have five houses. Yeah. And you get your five wives in the, in, in the different houses. What's your, dream, what's your dream team? Like, who are you going with? I'm, yeah. I'm so I'm so glad fun. you guys embraced it. Oh, I'm really interested to see it. where this goes, by the way. I love it. And you know what it is? Sometimes the draft ends up being something that, like, we don't have anything that night. So we're like, all right, drafts. The drafts are the best when the guest is the one who thinks of them. Yeah. Like the serial draft. Mormon. Uh, Mormon, Mormon yeah. You know what I mean? Um, this is a this is the most creative draft we've had. I'll say yeah, that right a, now. It's a good one. It's I'm a good honored. one. Let it be known that we've all had time to Think research and, yeah, and this figure it out. This has been yeah. it's not off the cuff. Let me tonight. do a couple. Right. I knew he was excited. He saw me at the beer thing. Was like, my list is fire, and I was like, I haven't even really like. Let me do up a couple of ads real quick. Uh, misguided spirits. We just talked about that. So listen, we got in a liquor store. Ball let's, Square Fine Wines. Let's go. Some of mass, mass, baby. Touchdown. Uh, my boy Jay hit me up yesterday. He's like, I'm in. We're in. We're going to be over there. So you can go get that. I'm pretty sure it's there now. You can go get their stuff. I had a guy in here the other night. My wife had a big party after her end of the school vacation thing with her friends in here. 
Um, I'll tell a story about that on the Patreon. But one of their husbands was in here. He likes whiskey. Gave him some of the Hanky Dinks Working Man whiskey. Oh. Guy was like, this is great. And he was like, the type of guy who knows what is shit. You know, his, his whiskey is good, you know. Um, you can check him out, misguided-spirits.com. And that's where you can buy their stuff, uh, like our friend Michaela did, right? Uh, let's just do Ted go real quick, quick. My guy, Teddy, get in bed with Ted, okay? Listen, Teddy told me he's got some time right now. Uh, if you've got some, uh, some home projects you're looking to do, like, you know, you're looking to finish your basement, looking to do a bathroom, looking to do whatever. Like, maybe put an addition. He put the whole addition onto uh, Gentile's house. That's who you want to go call. TedcoCM.com, 617-996-6827. Admin at tedcocm.com. Like I said, get yourself a estimate from them, and we'll do some more ads in a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to draft this, right? And um, Billy will start. I get first pick? You oh, first is pick. this a snake draft? Yes. Yep. So this per- this first pick's big. Though. Oh, you can pick who has first pick if you want. I'll, uh, no, you I'll, that too. I'll, okay. You're gonna give me All the right. first pick. I'm not trading it down. What am I yeah. fucking building? No. <laughs> Some people don't want the uh, you know don't want the don't want the, wait. the seven and the eight or whatever. Um, Which way are we going? Just to be clear, when we're doing drafts and I'm in the room, you don't you. call out names of oh, things no. that can be drafted. I go second. Pick. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like if wide receivers are up, you can't be like, oh, you know. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. Yeah, that's what. So okay. last week you talking about Sean? Yeah, yeah. We're not, <laughs> great guy. We're not I'm sure he's awesome. He's the best. He was killing me in that draft though, when he kept rattling off names. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, yeah I was like, we, whoa, call, whoa. we call him out. Immediately. Oh, I know you guys yeah, were yeah. pissed. So I, was, I knew you were my trash people then. Oh, uh, yeah. last thing I wanted to say real quick before we start this is that I had all my buddies from college and extended friends out the other night. One of my buddies, Lenny, who's one of the best characters, I got to get him on the podcast. He literally is the he's the, one of the funniest people I've ever met. He used a term the other night. He was talking about playing basketball, and he's like, I was done, boys. He goes, I was physically bankrupt after the whole thing. And I was like, that is fucking stolen. I'm fucking so I just want everybody to know, when I use physically bankrupt from now on, Credit my buddy Lennox. Credit him. That yeah, was you a couple buddy mornings Lennox. ago on, on yeah. that promo uh, video. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, by use the way, it. the minute I saw you with glasses on, that's my go-to when you know I'm on uh, yeah, If exactly. I got glasses on, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, I'm I can't phys- even put physically my fucking bankrupt. contacts in my eyes. Yeah. That's how yeah. bad it is. Um, all right, so let's stop, Billy, and give us uh, give us number one right off the rip. All right, I don't know how old you guys are, roughly, but we're about this close to the same age. We all have forties here. Yeah. All right. Thirty six. Thirty six. Yeah, child, baby. Fucking a child. Puppy. Wow. And taller than I fucking expected. <laughs> I love this guy. He's full of surprises. Um, all right, I'm just I'm coming right out, and I'm taking this pick first because I feel like she put breast implants on everyone. Pamela Anderson from fucking Baywatch is my first round pick. Everybody in the world has crack stick to this chick from our generation. <laughs> Tommy Lee from Motley Crue marries her. Crack stick, by the way, you need to make t-shirts. We'll talk about that yeah. later. I, that's a term that I didn't hear before this. It's adopted. It's I think a, I said it in front of my seven-year-old fucking, daughter yesterday. It's, a fucking, it's an unbelievable one. I'm taking one. Pamela Anderson because iconic. Just You don't see breast plant, implants on all these ladies across the world right now. Unless she hits the fucking airways the way that she did. Okay, so just to be clear, I want to so make sure. Here's, yeah, here's I my question. I thought we were drafting wives of characters on TV so shows. Did I. Just, wives of characters on TV shows. So they have to or, be an actual wife. No. <clears throat> I think this is a great pick. Yeah, I yeah. think it's a great pick. I'm fine with the change. What I you know what's said, funny? No, just so the listeners know, we went over a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know yeah, how yeah. I missed this. We've been texting. So well, what, it, what I would have said if I was going to draft Pamela Anderson yep. was I would have been... The home video that her and Tommy Lee shot because they were married at the time. <laughs> yeah. That's a white yeah, yeah, movie. That's a white video. That's a fine film. A movie. So that's yeah. where so I would have drafted her, which is it's fine though because I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> I, I was because Billy. He we're gonna have to as, keep it, the, dude. Yeah, I remember. He I remember when I first saw like, that video. The, sitcoms and movies. Yeah, who, who The caregiver. The nurturer. This. That. Yeah, and then I was like, I'm drafting five smoke shows. Yeah, he was like, I just want to. Well, I got some ideas on that, but the first time I saw that was in college. Some kid had it. And he was like, I remember he was like, dude, wait to see how big Tommy Lee's dick is. And I'm like, I think you got the wrong interest Ch- level in this video. Chill, bro. homie. Yeah. Pause. I mean, sorry. I was driving I, I got your boys back, okay? Because, <laughs> because as, as much as you were excited to watch her naked and doing all this fucking phenomenal shit you've only thought up in your sick mind, you were distracted by the size of that guy. Yeah, you were like, I don't have that going on. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, looks like my arm now. <laughs> so, hold on. So... Was Pamela Anderson a mom or a wife in Baywatch? No, no, but that's what I mean. That's that was my point. I don't think in Baywatch she. W- I think she was like a single lady. All right, so we can so we can still do Tommy. I mean, uh, Tommy. Yeah, he can do Tommy Lee. <laughs> he wants the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Go I think in. if you just I move it. it to the home video, I think it works. It works. Okay. It works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it I mean. qualifies. Qualifies. Yes. All I mean, right, Fitzy, you're up. 
We're going this way? Oh, no, we're going to me, right? Sorry. Yeah. All right, hold on one second, because I'm, I'm, I got two notes. I got to record the data. I told you I was going to break every rule in this thing. Yeah. I was, one of my picks was going to be like a real stretch of a woman playing a housewife. You know what I mean? But I think it's great. Shows, lady was in TV shows, lady was in movies. Pick her as your wife. I don't give a fuck if she played a mother. So she doesn't have to technically be a wife, right? No. I, every but one of my picks, picks but is, I would but, wife is, but I don't yes. care. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, here's what I'm going with. First off the board, one of the best to ever do it on television. Sophia Vergara. You piece uh, of shit. I mean, <laughs> listen, and I'm not even uh, like, nothing, listen, I love same. all women. Too. What's right? that show, Modern Family? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I'm not specifically like some like guy who like loves Spanish chicks. You know what I mean? Well, like I think, we guy. got a couple. But you had to, yeah. you had to snake but it before I mean, he picked. No, I'm just saying, I mean, she is, everything is in the right place. She's Phenomenal. She is absolutely gas. She's the best. By the way, she's excellent in that show, Griselda. Which, by the Fucking way, Fucking excellent. Have you seen Griselda in real life? No. They she's, will, yeah, she's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you know what? Sophia, you want to you wanna play the most gruesome like, looking human ever? Griselda, the real Griselda looks like she could be a beef reviewer. It's you know what I mean? Like, like that would be like, that's she, what she looks like. She like be, one of the guys. She could be like, like, Scally like, Cat Mafia. Yeah. Scally Cat Mafia the Facebook page has the worst looking people that have ever lived. They like, it actually made me think like, am I ugly? Because I wear Scally Caps? Like, like, the old, like, Rob Messenger's in it. He posts sometimes because he's a wicked big collector. Messenger looks like a model in this fucking group. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you would look like, they'd be like Brad fella. Pitt's in the group. Oh, it was, it was short Brad Pitt. Yeah, I'm like when I saw it, I was like, "There's no way they're talking about the same exact person." Sure as shit, I catch an episode and I'm like, "They're talking about the cocaine dealer," and I go, "That girl is like, she looks like Super Mario more than yeah. she does. <laughs> She's fucking gross." All right, Danny. Well, I just got shafted. bodied. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter which way we go. Me and Brandon are stealing your picks. I know, but like, we'll switch seats. I think one I day. automatically like she wasn't even gonna be like my top three, but I think I automatically gotta go Latina here. So I'm going Eva Longoria, Desperate Housewives. It's a great Phenomenal one. Phenomenal pick. Yeah. Phenomenal pick. Her name was Gabrielle, by the way. I didn't watch one episode. I just knew she was a mom. I've, yeah, I've <laughs> never really seen it. Even Modern Family, I've never really seen no, it. No, I watched a couple. Dude, that show's kind of funny, dude. That show's I had a girlfriend at one point who told me that she's like, somebody told me that I look like Eva Longoria. I was like, my dad told me I could play for the Celtics one day, too. <laughs> fucking, come on, get your fucking head right. It's awesome. All right, Fritz, you go back to back. All right, so my number one is Beverly D'Angelo of National Lampoon's Vacation. Opening scene, she does every 12-year-old's bona material striptease for Chevy Chase in front of his fucking... Uh, video recorder. This is an A plus pick. This is a. This is a. It wasn't on my radar, and it's a fucking unbelievable. She's pick. taking good fucking care of you, yeah. dude. Unbelievable, right? And then the kicker is, fucking dickhead Chevy Chase goes to the the whatever the fountain in fucking Italy, wherever they yeah. were, and he's like, "Hey, buddy, take our picture, right?" He loses the tape of his yeah. wife fucking doing a strip tease yeah. in front of everyone. Some little little guy fucking steals his fucking uh, VHS recorder. Yeah. That was European, right? Vacation. Yeah, the original vacation. Yep. Pig in the pole. Okay, the original. That's the cross country trip. Wally World. No. European, European vacation. vacation. That's yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. that's, two? that's two. Okay, yeah. Yep. yeah. I so, remember. Yeah, I'll Beverly tell you right now. This is not a lie. I think the first time I got like I got uh, like like I was feeling my pants get Bowled tight up, yeah. was when Christy Brinkley like came out to the pool. Oh. And okay. The first one, I was like, <laughs> I can't get up anytime soon. Christy like, Brinkley. She was married to. Uh, Billy Joel. Billy Joel. And stalked him afterwards. That's how fucking awesome Billy, Billy Joel, Joel is. is. <laughs> that Christy Brinkley stalked him. I know I've told the story. Legend I'm going to make it status. really quick. Maggie's mom and dad were at uh, Nantucket years and years ago uh, out to dinner. And they went in there and Billy Joel and Christy Brinkley were there. They had a piano and Billy Joel sat there and he just started playing. He played like for like an hour. Pussies are just wet. And like, it was just like soaked, 20 adults. Soaked, bro. Yeah. Soaked panties yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Um, all right, Fitz, who's your second? Uh... Jamie Lee Curtis from True Lies. Good, wow. good pick, dude. Phenomenal pick. Good pick. I almost put it on my list. I good didn't. pick, dude. Never so thought I'd say that. Arnold, <laughs> right? Arnold has no idea what he has sitting at home. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, this fucking used car salesman comes in and pretends he's some spy. And all of a sudden, Jamie Lee Curtis is stripping in a hotel when room. When she's dancing, that awful white girl can't dance moves. You don't even <laughs> care because you're just like... Yeah. Dude, yeah. I was like that. I and remember. I was like, you look like a substitute teacher, but I'm in. <laughs> this is what women will never understand about us. We can forget fucking where everything is in the house. I can't find the scissors. My wife hates my guts. But I'll remember exactly the face that Jamie Lee Curtis <laughs> was making in True Lies when her tits were bouncing. <laughs> <up and down. laughs> 
<laughs> it's just that we're just sick. We're just designed differently. It's yeah. weird. I don't yeah. even want to be like Why? that. I yeah. tell my wife all the time, I'm like, I don't want to think like this. Right. Yeah. But it's, it's how I'm, it I'm biologically designed, yeah. designed <laughs> to just spray out. I don't yeah. know what to tell you. <laughs> all right, Danny. All right. Uh, at the beginning of this movie, this is why this is a great pick, in my opinion. At the beginning of this movie, she was neither a... Is the movie Life. It is not Life. <laughs> it is not Life. <laughs> I'm the puppet. It was not Life. But uh, she was not a mother or a wife. However, she turned into one, and that's how the movie began. Jennifer Aniston, We're the Millers. That great is a pick. fucking... Yeah. That, you just dominated me because... I've been trying to think all day of a movie where she was Wait, a wife or a mother. And she stripped she, in she, it? So that yes. actress is now off the board now. Like, you can't take yeah, Rachel no, no, from yeah, Friends yeah, now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Correct. Okay. Yeah. You guys have to bear with me on the rest of the draft. I didn't follow my own rule about the wife thing. That's to be fine. Completely you honest, what it's his fault. Because right. when he was like, you know, fuck the wife and no, nurture her still, thing, he's like, he was talking about banging. I, was gonna, I switched to sex. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna manipulate. I switched the rules. to the best sexual experience I could have in my cul de sac. And I forgot all about wives. You're gonna have to bear with me. I'm sorry if it messes up your list. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm up. Um, I did a lot of thinking about this, and I thought about it in ways that I think were a little uh, more uh, Joey Boats esque thinking about this situation. Because I, first of all, I think having five wives sounds like the worst thing in the fucking world. Yeah, I think it sounds fucking tough, horrible. But you're not living with all five in the once. You no, walk I next understand. door when you get pissed yeah. off at the first one. Yeah, yeah. It, it just doesn't... Like, it does I, sound awful. It's, Still, this text man. You're going to be getting it, texted. It's fucking constantly. brutal. Hey, the so, Mormon guys are out there fucking doing it. Sack up. Yeah, so, just I, so here's through. what I'm thinking. Like, Sophia Vergara is like my number one wife. She's okay. my... on uh, Now, I'm not going to use the name. Okay, so, because I don't want to give anything else away for anybody else. So Sophia Vergara is like my number one queen bee. Mm-hmm. Right? That's like my queen bee, right? Oh, Jace. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's just... I, she, she could speak Russian, for all I can. I, I don't even know need to know what's coming out of her mouth. But, coming out of her mouth, but hopefully it's me. Anyways. <laughs> you got it, Fritz, right? <laughs> <laughs> ah, man. This is one of my favorite jokes, by the way, but it's maybe a little too hot for this. This show might be better for Patreon, but I'll say it anyways. This is episode 99, the great one. Yeah, Let when, it go. When I, Let when it I heard somebody say... Uh, <laughs> Smartest thing to ever come out of her mouth was my dick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, all right. I didn't say that. Somebody else said it. Some horrible person. I'm use that for sure. Marilyn so, Manson said it. Yeah, exactly. Some real bad Has person. Has he been drafted yet? Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can do that. Rib, right. The rib trick. Right. So enough. the way I was looking at this is this, right? If I'm going to get guys going to five wives, I'm probably going to be up to some fucking nefarious shit somewhere along the way. Some mm-hmm. tax evasion or some, like, you know, some shit like that. So I'm taking fucking Laura Linney. Wendy Bird from Ozarks. Oh, let's go. Oh. All right. I'll tell you wow. why. I like she it. Could, you, if you have to kill one of the other wives, yes. she'll bury her with you. She, right? Ruthless. Ruthless, yes. right? It's a great and pick. It she is a good pick. fucking, the pick. one sex scene she was in, in in that, like, seemed like she likes to get down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, she, I think she's the type of, uh, like, that character. Too bad for her husband. Yeah, he just, it didn't work <laughs> out for him, but... Um, <laughs> but I, I go in Wendy Bird. She bury your body with you. Great one. Definitely good in the sack. She might even surprise you. Like the only thing you have to worry about, she might kill like your number one. Yeah. Just to fuck it. Or yeah. you. Yeah. Or you. Yeah. <laughs> At any moment. So yeah. all right, that's what I'm going with. You just have five back, widows dude. sitting there. Like yep. That. I'm up. You got two. Two back all to right. back. Adriana from The Sopranos. I know. She, I know. Let's I know. Go. Yeah. yeah. But, but I need her. She's yeah. a wife. Yeah. Hey. I fucking need her. Yeah, but fuck okay. you because I had her as I know, you Sons took of her Anarchy. Out. I know. Oh, yeah. Son, yeah, but she, yeah. All oh, Sons of Anarchy when she was the junkie. Yeah. yeah. She was a junkie. But then she turned out to Even be a better. great mom. Yep. She was Jax's she did. baby mama. Oh. Yeah. Hey, I met her in real life, by the way, at Hammond Castle Museum. Really? I have a picture with she her on my Instagram. She's only fans right now. Dre Yeah. And she was with her bass player husband from White Snake. Fucking great. You know that? Did you know that she's married to the bass player? I didn't know that, but she used to be married to the guy. Also, she was married to, um, what's his name's kid? Uh, Waylon Jennings' kid. Shooter Jennings. She was married to him, too. So she's been around. Yeah. Um, So I was at hockey today. Yep. And Evan brought her up. I was like, she's not on my radar. It's a great pick, though. It's a great pick. All right. I'm up again. I'm going. You're up. Halle Berry from Swordfish. Fucking dickhead. I got Halle Berry from (laughs) Monsters Ball. There you go. Leticia. Yeah. God damn it. We, really we all know the scene. We all know the fucking scene. Yeah, no shit. See, this is what I mean about being a dude. I can't find my fucking toothbrush. <laughs> it's in the same fucking spot. <laughs> but I remember exactly what she was doing, how she was sitting as he approached her in the fucking pool chair. At the pool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't yeah, but forget. How about, how about a monster's ball? You make, you know. make you feel good. Uh, that oh, scene, shit. I almost picked that one. Yeah. That scene, but I actually thought her character was hotter in 
not the fu- the, the fucking was harder. First off, it's Halle Berry. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you win it no matter what. Yeah. Especially that, that era, like, that's my pick. That era, Halle Berry. <laughs> All right, I'm about to throw a fucking. I'm about to throw one out there. It's a really. I'm going left field here. Let's go. Because in my mind, I'm ready. I used to have this book when I was a little kid. It was called The House with an Orange, The Orange Plot. You ever seen that book? No. It's a great book. It's, a, it's a, like the beginning is like everybody lives on this block and they all have the same fucking house. And then one day, uh, this fucking seagull comes by and he drops a can of orange paint on a guy's house and there's a big orange spot. Everybody's like, clean it up. And he was like, nah, fuck that. And he paints everything all over the house. He makes a wild painting. And then the next guy's like, fuck that. I'm turning my house into a boat. So now everybody has these cool ass houses, right? The whole idea was like in- individual. So in my mind, all these houses on the cul de sac are like different, right? Yep. And I want to be like, I want to have some variety. Variety in the is the spice of life. I'm going. This, li- is, I'm this going, is where the Malcolm X hat comes in. Nope, I'm going Lily Monster from the Monsters. <laughs> all right? She was hot. Right, I want to like go in there and hear like dun 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 dun. See, I like, like this. I, I like like the thing coming out of the wall. Like that's like and I could drive around that monster mobile. Yeah, like that's the yeah. hand. Yes, can the that hand, be yeah. included? Exactly. Yeah, Three, yeah. And a threesome. Yeah, Let's exactly. Go. Yeah, <laughs> cousin it coming out of the fucking wall. Like, yeah, I'm going Lily Monster from the monsters. I like it. I could have gone at five, by the way. Well, Lily Munster's not on my radar, but that's you know. But uh, listen, that's definitely too old for you. You would not. No, but I know the dude. First off, the. Frankenstein or whatever, he was uh he was the judge in Bernard my favorite comedy. you mean? Yeah, him. He was the judge in My Cousin Vinny. So yeah, you that's go. true. You're right. My favorite right. comedy. Yeah. The two what? You know, Great movie, by the way. Yeah. Not a first round draft pick. Of course it is. All right, yeah. you're up. Oh, baby. All right, she was a mom. I'm going to keep this tradition going a little bit. Eva Mendez in Training Day. Ooh. We're hitting the Latino heat big time. I don't have a choice, dude. So good. That's the search bar on Pornhub in my house. <laughs> hey, didn't used to be mine. That's that's now me. My, my wife ever leaves me, I'm moving right to South America. <laughs> Just you don't even need to learn the other language. They, by by the way, blue eyes, Caucasian, and they're good to them. You men. are an A plus. You, you you go straight to the, you got a fast pass at Disney. Beautiful. <laughs> they just sign me up. They automatically think you have a 780 credit score. Oh, dude. <laughs> If I if I knew then what I knew now, you know what I mean. <laughs> love you, Mandy. I love Portuguese girls. Girls that are half Portuguese and German are actually my number one pick. <laughs> After that, I'm going South America. Talk about niche market. Uh, all right, Fitz, you going da- back to back? All right, Danny's gonna hate that these two are off the board. It's all right. Selma Hayek from Grown Ups. Oh my god, how did I miss that? <laughs> right? How did I but, miss that? So I mean, Grown Ups is is a great movie, and she's a mom. She got two kids. She's yep. married to Adam Sandler. But just think about Dust Till Dawn in Dogma. That's that's what I'm picturing. When Dust I, Till when Dawn. I, I almost put her on my. Actually, I think she's on my list from Dust, Dust Till Dawn. Oh, when I'm when I'm taking Salma Hayek, I'm picturing those two movies. That's Dust a great Till Dawn. Pick. She in, is. In I'm Dogma. Is this third I'm round actually, we're in right now or fourth? This is my third pick, but I, that's a great value pick another, in the third yeah. round. I got another fourth one coming. Mel Kiper would be jacked. Sal, well, you're up next. Salma Hayek. Hold on. Selma yeah, Hayek. he wants to talk about Salma Hayek. Salma Hayek in good in Grown Ups. I'm all in. Yeah. When uh, yeah. when John what's it John Lovitz is like pretend to be the Lovitz? Uh, Lovitz he's pretending to be the uh, it's grown ups too but still yeah grown ups too. Just, I just watched both those movies this weekend he's yeah. pretending to be the uh, the yoga instructor and not he's bad like, he's like not up bad down, you just see how much fucking cans going everywhere super She's bad was around gorgeous. the same yeah. time remember when I won the last draft for the comedy <laughs> movies yeah, super bad <laughs> my number one pick for super bad was fi- it's like the best comedy I ever. chose you as the winner of that draft yeah. also I mean easily thank you I, I will say it wasn't it wasn't easily who drafted Dumb and Dumber. By the way, you oh nice, <laughs> uh, who, who great, did? great, who great. Who drafted Dumb and Dumber? Uh, you yep. did. Yeah, you did Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. It's a great pick. Hell of a guy. Uh, I was a lot of comments. Hell of a guy. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you right now, you put David Spade on anything, and I think it's the funniest thing ever. I just think Spade is Higgins. that one. What's the what's the one when he plays the hick dad? It's not that's my boy, but it's like it's kind of like that. He's a New Hampshire dad, piece of shit, lives in a trailer. I don't know. It's direct to Netflix, it. and it was like really? a Happy Madison movie. It's fucking hilarious, dude. It's fucking funny. It. Anyways, go ahead, Fitz. Vivica A. Fox in Independence Day. Ooh. So yeah. she's sneaky, hot. Dude, she's in a red fucking lingerie thing, I believe, at the strip club. You are correct. See, you don't forget. <laughs> you don't forget. <laughs> oh, I love this draft so much. Great value pick. Great pick, dude. Wow. Will Smith going off to save the world. Yeah. Vivica's at home stripping. And then she the goes kid. and takes care of the first the lady. Kid. She's like, hold on, let me, yeah, yeah. She's let like, me drive out into the desert she's and like, find wait. the first lady who crashed in a helicopter and take care of her. Yeah, she's, she's like, wait ace. a minute, you're blind now? I got you. It's <laughs> a great pick. All right, it's all right. Caregiver, nurturer. <laughs> Fitz, man, he's always the sneaky. He's the one I worry about. Yeah. I mean, I can't even get mad at any of these picks so he's, far. He's solid. 
I got to come with some heat right now. But if I don't pick this, I'm going to regret it because it's part of my child. And we already mentioned the movie mm-hmm. earlier today. Mm-hmm. I got to go with Stifler's mom, American Pie. Oh, that's a that's a very good pick. Also, listen, when the, I mean, the term MILF came out she's because ta- of her. Hey, she's taken fucking very good care of you. Yes. Yes. That's the house. She's when you when you walk vet. out of the bitchy wife, you know, when fucking whoever Salma Hayek's yelling at you or whatever, yes. when you go next door, she's like, come here, baby. And you're just, and you're <laughs> all the fuck about That it. was a perfect Jennifer Coolidge <laughs> fucking she's, voice. She's, you're just like, you're falling into her arms and you're feeling so safe. Yeah. That was fucking. That's a great pick. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, you know, he's like, Stiffless Mom's coming. I gotta, I gotta get. I gotta get ready, and he gets all fucking flushed. Here's the other question: We, know, we know both his categories. It's it's South America and, and milf porn, right there. <laughs> there's this, there's this two browser here. Um, not, not too not too far not off. Not too far off. We'll put them together. Um, oh. All right, I'm going. Okay, like I said, in every one of these houses, I need some some variety, and I need some. I'm not just a fucking. I'm not just a fucking hit it and quit it, post a ghost type of guy. I think I need to fucking have a meal. Have a discussion, have enjoy a glass the of wine. You want to enjoy the company. That's right. I'll tell you who I'm going to enjoy the company with because every once in a while I'm going to want to get to there and play some fucking music, listen to records. And I'm going to do that with one woman, okay? I'm going to do that with, hold on, because look right now I, I'm doing it with Raina James from Nashville, Connie Breton, uh, also known for her role in Friday Night Lights as Coach Taylor's wife. Oh, uh, uh, Tammy Taylor. Tammy Taylor, yes. Can That's who I'm going with. Uh, she was a country star in Nashville, but she's also... You've never seen Friday Night Lights, the TV show? No. Oh! Claire Eyes? My God. I've never heard of it. What? I've never heard of her. Listen, you wore a fucking beaded necklace around your neck for <laughs> fucking <laughs> eight years. Absolutely. <laughs> your brain probably wasn't getting enough air supply to <laughs> fucking watch the TV. <laughs> Christ Tammy, Tammy Taylor, <laughs> honest to God, right? When I was, like, searching, like... Because I was... Her, her real name, Tammy Taylor? No, no, that's no, her no. name on the show. Name's Connie Breton. Connie, but she Connie. is a... She's got a hot cat- name. Her character, yeah, she's one of those like first and last names. She was the wife of the brothers McMullen that he was cheating on. Yes, she's a fucking, she's an awesome wife, right. hot. Yes, it's endorsed by. by oh Dan. yeah, I know who she is. Let's see the good, good pick. Yeah, sign good me up pick. for the strawberry blonde. Oh. Oh. Strawberry blonde, gingery almost. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Sign me up for that. Variety. I, gotta, I actually. All right, life. Billy, you have your final two picks back to back. This is it for me. This yep. is it. Two. You, do you, you track in my first three? Oh, yeah. I have everything. You're Can you read them to me real quick? <laughs> Sam <laughs> Anderson, <laughs> Adriana from The Sopranos, yep. and Haley Berry from Swordfish. Haley Berry. Haley. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm going to go with the blue bitch from Avatar, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I like a little bit of an adventure. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what's going to happen there. What does that tail that plugs into things do? <laughs> Is that going in the front? Is that going in the back? I have no fucking idea. Back. I'm game. 100% I'm game. back. I like to learn about her culture. I'd like to learn what they like to eat. And then I want to hear how she how she makes love. Yeah. You know? And, and come on, blue. That's got to look, that that's gotta look real nice to wake up next to. Yeah, absolutely. Eiffel, Eiffel 65. 65. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going there. And then I'm going to finish... That one was kind of weird, so I feel like I should go back. <laughs> it's fine. And, and I'm going with J-Lo it. from Hustlers. J-Lo, Ooh. I mean, is just... I like it at that age group, too, that she's in, that movie Hustlers, which, by the way, I haven't even seen. I don't know if that counts or not, but I've seen the trailer <laughs> multiple times counts. in a couple clips, and she looks so good for her age. She should. She makes yeah. a lot of money. She's got personal trainers. But Jennifer Lopez, when she came into my life, something changed that day. You so, know? so before we leave tonight, I'm going to show you a video. It's a real-life clip. Of uh, is it in your hidden? No, 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 no. <laughs> it, you can find it on TikTok. Secret it's folder? hilarious. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's her and Ben walking to the car. Oh, you've seen it. And he just slams the when door. He's and pissed. F- that's my life with a Puerto Rican woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought he was gonna be more excited about my J Lo pick, but he kind of looked at me like you fucking. You're an idiot. <laughs> You're, an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna get yelled at. <laughs> just, but like, you'll get hot meals and stuff. Like, yeah. you'll, you know, she'll give you a pillow Rice for the couch. Beef. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. It, it's all worth it. They're great moms. Great. For the most part, wives, but you're gonna get beat up sometimes, you know. Does she yell at you in Spanish? Yeah, but who cares? Yeah. No, but I would love that. Yeah, but I that, think that would be hot. Yeah, and then she, and then you gotta. Uh, they call them chancletas. That's the slippers. They throw them at your face. Got it. Can you yeah. speak Spanish, by the way? Nah, uh, that's a negativo. Okay. No, I cannot. <laughs> I know the swears. I know what to be called. That's about it. Last right. picks. These are big picks right, right. now. This Dude, is my walk this in. Is, get focused. This is my pick. Um. This could go anyway. I mean, I got a bunch here, but I, I got to go with a with a tried and true one. I think this is like, I, I'm never, I know, I'm never gonna win another draft. I know I'm not, but this is one that will give people pause and be like, that was an unbelievable value pick at five. 
and I'm sticking to the original thoughts of the original rules. But I'm going with Lori Laughlin, a.k.a. Let's Becky go. Donaldson Let's from Full go. House. Aunt Becky from Full House. So yeah. I was just hey, looking. Standing ovation I was, that pick. I was just looking at my list, That's and I was phenomenal. like, there's so much talent left on the bench. Yeah. In, I'm all for it. Uh, Aunt, uh, Aunt uh, Becky uh, was one of my top ones where I was like, I'm, and I still wasn't going to draft her, which you should have. It's great. I think it's a fucking awesome. I was like, there's so much a great talent pick. left. We can still do a, a man off the bench. I'm we all can for do, it. We can do a, a six man. Well, you do an honorable, we'll do an honorable pick. mention, but it doesn't count when we post 100%. it. 100%. You yeah. just posted top five. If one yep. of our wives goes on the but engine reserve, because I have, from I have, the bench. I have, that I have a great more. pick. I have, a, I have one I think is kind of funny, but like I don't want to put it in my top five. Me too. Yeah. Because I think it could go bad for me in the actual relationship. I no, but like, my, like my, <laughs> like I thought about this, like my personality with this person, that whole thing. My, right, go ahead. My no, well, no, because oh, like sorry. my one off the bench, like they're they're all. I, I honestly can't believe none of them have been picked. To be honest, me too. I was just looking at, there's and a, I'm so happy so that he picked. Cody Hot Women. It's great. I'm this so is happy such a that he draft. picked like, Becky. Is, yeah, that was a great fucking pick. Aunt Becky's a phenomenal pick. Because yeah. I was looking at my 100%. list and I was like, oh, she's still out there. All right, go ahead. All right, last pick, and uh. I don't even know if I know a lot of people watch show. I'm not sure if anyone here does. It's a newer show, but when I first started watching it, this woman just caught my eye, and I looked into her Wikipedia more than anyone else on earth. Monica from Yellowstone. It's not Monica that you think. No, it is Monica. That fucking Native American looking girl. Oh, oh yeah. Her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's I the worst character on the show. <laughs> she's hot as hell. We had this discussion before. She should have, if she got killed, the she's, second episode would be the best show ever. She's so hot. His face when he made the connection to who oh, he was. He was so disappointed. She's such a drag on her husband. She's not a good. Yeah. Listen, you would have to. This is what I'm saying. In my Casey. head, you're going to have to live no, with her. He loves Casey, abuse. Dude. dude. Listen to me. Monica is hot. Monica stinks. Monica is hot. This is this is your strawberry frosted mini wheat. <laughs> no, it's this not. Draft. This is your no, Friday not. three no, of this, this draft. Is like, yeah. This is like no, what I say. This is no. This, this is, like, is what he does. No, though. he'll no. he'll kill you and then he'll drop a fucking outlier. That he Mo leaves in so Monica. Much. Monica in Yellowstone. If you don't you like Monica, said Monica from Friends. <laughs> Mo Monica in, in Yellowstone. All right. If you don't like Monica in Yellowstone, you don't like America. She found that fucking place. All right. You fucking heathens. Listen, I'm pro Native America. I just want to make sure everybody yeah, knows okay. that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let's see your feathers. <laughs> She's so skinny, too. I she love looks her. like fucking. I she looks like her. Tom Hanks from Philadelphia. You're out of your fucking mind, dude. You're out of your mind. <laughs> For a guy who likes a full body woman, I know. Like a ass. All I of a sudden, he picks this skinny little girl. I love her. I absolutely love her. Love All right. her. Are you Damn. kidding me? The She's Danny so Gillis outlier has been drafted. I think, like, I, like, like, I think that Danny just likes, maybe likes women that like are gonna give him a hard time because she just gives her yeah, husband the she's worst fucking time. Brutal. Yeah, like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Casey's because, out there as a, no. like American hero because yes, like, because trying to raise his kid right, and she's just like, I suck. She's because like, the worst, <laughs> the worst wife. Balling her eyes out. Don't talk to your family. She's a stick Your family sucks. That's the definition we, of a stick in the butt. We know who the worst. Wife of all time is, and that's Charmaine Buka. <laughs> well, well, Charmaine wasn't almost yeah, drafted because you always talk about. I her. She was very, hate she her, was very close. So in our group text, yeah, it was the first picture I saw. Yeah, yeah, I was like, here's my number one, just to <laughs> yeah, fuck with Danny. The hall pass. Yeah, are you kidding? I'm like looking through. All right, Danny, good. I mean, sorry, Fitz. Oh, she's so hot, dude. All right, Final so pick. My number five, right? So yeah. when Billy breached this subject, he said we had to have, like, the caregiver, the nurturer, all that Those stuff, Those were right? examples I gave, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But I'm also thinking about, like, a smoke show. I want someone that's going to be beautiful. Yeah, I know, because you replied to... with, fuck the caregiver type. <laughs> I want all smoke shows. <laughs> but I thought about it, and I was like, I'm going to follow these rules. I'm not going to fuck around, right? Mm -hmm. Bonnie Hunt from Cheaper by the Dozen. Oh, do you know who she is? I'm not Bonnie Hunt, the singer. Wah, nope. Wah, That's Bonnie Ray. So you know Helen Hunt. I was from, thinking Bonnie uh, Tyler. Anyone named Bonnie shouldn't be making this list. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Go, go take, go look at some pictures. Are you kidding me? Go look at some pictures and watch the movie. Bonnie? No Nobody seen, named Bonnie has uh, ever been hot. No one's seen Cheaper <laughs> by the Dozen. This is Bonnie Hunt. You oh, guys yeah. haven't seen Cheaper by the Dozen? I have not. Oh my catch, goodness. Catch your pick, dude. That's my fifth. Yeah. Guess who's not winning this one, buddy? Listen, listen, so she's she's a caregiver. She has 12 kids in the movie Cheaper by the Dozen. All right. And after, Close 12, your legs. after 12 kids, <laughs> she still looks great. I got, That's what I'm talking I gotta about. I got to say this right now. There's no clear winner this week. And I'm looking at him because everyone always has one that people, but people are going to be like, really months, you fucking idiot. Uh, the blue Danny, lady. I looked at you and I'm like, Danny's going to win. And I saw Monica from Yellowstone. <laughs> she's the best. <laughs> She's Let's, the best. She's the dude. I got her on my fucking. All right, we got honorable mentions. Yeah, 
Here's what we'll do. We'll go, we'll go out of order. I'll start, go to Billy, then we'll come back around. Sure. All right. Okay. Okay. I had a bunch of people listed here, right? Um, I was going to pick Leah Remini. It's a great yeah. pick. I thought from about King of Queens. King of Queens, yes. Now, dude. But here's the thing. She was a Scientologist. I was thinking about this she's, in the context of this. Wicked short like she'll Jan, leave like Danny. the fucking group. Oh, she left the Scientologist. Yes. She's, dude, she's small. She won't stand for it. And she's got a fucking <laughs> mouth on her. Yeah, she won't stand for it. I'd be like, Leah, settle the fuck down. Yeah, but you? I think, like, that's, like... You want to go back to Kevin James? I, I, I gotta be honest with you, I'm into that pick, though. She could punish me. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I'm a big fan of hers. I that's think she's great. Pick. That's a good one off the bench. Um, All right, but my bench pick? Up. Yeah, bench pick. Since I made this fucking completely weird one, went, went off the fucking beaten path, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna finish with the three-titty lady from Total Recall. <laughs> The yeah. lady with the three tits. I don't even remember what her fucking face looks like. It doesn't matter. I agree. I'm it's having a rough day. My fucking boss yelled at me. My other wives are being fucking twats. <laughs> I'm going to the three titty lady, right? <laughs> right after I get plugged by the blue lady. You know what I mean? The possibilities are endless. Sometimes you just need to have an escape. What if and they, what if they meet each other? What a time that would be. Oh, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. You know? Think outside the box. What a time to be alive. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I don't like know what it. her name is, but three titty lady from Total Recall. Trace. I think that is her name. That is her god name. name. Her name is yeah. Trace. In the credits. Yeah. Lady with three tits. I'm going Marge Simpson. <laughs> I knew you were going to. I, I, I felt like somebody love, was going to come up with this. I love Marge Simpson, dude. And there was a. And she puts up with a lot. Yeah, she puts up with a ton with those three heathens and fucking Homer. I, listen. <laughs> Homer. There was an episode where she was in a bathing suit. I think they were on like a cruise or something. She's fucking stacked. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable, dude. You can put up with that blue hair. The just snots like, were flying on listen, that one. Let me just tell you right now. The blue hair was watching Fitzy Plan B at the Warp Tour. Yeah. <laughs> Fitzy has said Homer twice on this show. Yeah. Once when he was describing himself as a potential author. And now. And I think it might be my favorite word that you say. Yeah. <laughs> Homer. Yeah, there's no, there's no R anywhere in sight. I don't fuck around. <laughs> I'm not going weird pick. Okay. Because I, I like almost picked her. Sheila from Rescue Me. Oh, I love it. Good pick. Yeah. Yes. Show for Rescue her. Me was a great show. A it was a great show. That that's didn't uh, quite, it, it had so many flaws. Ex, it was amazing. Right? It was good. No, that's it. That's his ex's. Uh, no, his uh, his uncle's or brother. It was the one that was dead. That, she was the yeah. widow. Yeah, she was the widow. She was the widow. Yeah. And by the way, they, his cousin, like, that show his cousin started, Jimmy's wife. Sorry. That show started with him like seeing all these dead people. They abandoned that whole thing. Like, like after the first season, they were like, all right, we're just going to have it be about the firehouse, I guess, yeah. instead. Um, great pick. I like that pick a lot. I love that show. That was, the show was great. It was one of those shows that went on like four seasons too long. Like, yeah, it just started, it was, totally. Like, let's burn the house down or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> all right, enough. <laughs> Uncle on this. Uh, let's do a couple ads. Okay. And then we got voicemails. Lily Pease, you want to do it? Yeah, Lily Pease. I'm ready. Go for it. Um, Lily Pease Chicken. 50 Binney Street, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Parking is validated in the lot attached to the restaurant. If you want to go to the website, it's lilypeaschicken.com. I want you to go there and try the shishito peppers. Matt Ricci, our buddy, yep. is quoted as saying, these are the best shishito peppers in the world. Love it. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I yeah. ate there last week with that There's kid, no Jay, there. from Misguided. No. I ate there, and I got the, I got the uh, hot and honey. Yeah, the hot and honey's bomb. Awesome. It's always great. Low Broadway. Yep. I recommend that. The fried chicken. Get a two piece and a biscuit. Yeah. You're not going to go wrong. It's fucking unbelievable food. Tisket and Tasket. D yeah, correct, <laughs> Brendan. They also have a hub hall location at North Station. So if you're going in for a Bruins game or a Celtics game, check out that location. Grab a sandwich, a little sides. Executive chef and owner Chris Parsons, lilypeaschicken.com. Let's fucking go. Oh, real quick. I want to say a shout out. That article that my buddy wrote about me in the in oh, published gold. in the fucking town paper, so gold. fucking oh. awesome, is bro the best thing I've ever seen in my life. That headline, the title of that <laughs> fourth article, fourth generation Melrose. Saying, what is yeah. it? It's like fourth generation Melrose completely erases family legacy or yes. something like that. It was legit hysterical, <laughs> dude. Whoever wrote that, thumbs up. It's uh, I can't give a, I can't give away the names. Uh, it's an anonymous situation, but yeah. Um, my favorite thing was like. It ends with this one. Yeah. Fourth generation Melrosian <laughs> obliterates family legacy. That is, you should get that tattooed across your chest, yeah. bro. Yeah. That is so, yeah, so good. For people who don't know what I'm talking about, I think I posted it on the public court page, but I lost our fans football league, and part of it is a public shaming. 
mm-hmm. it used to be like like walking up and down the street with a fucking sign on, but now they put an article about you in the paper and just rip your ass. It's and it's such cool. these guys, most of these guys aren't from Melrose. There's a few of them that are. So like it's even better because everybody's seeing this article that like I grew up with and like all that stuff. So that's so uh, yeah, I was like such a dickhead in the picture. Oh, I'm like, it's the worst I look like the biggest ever. hot ass like, huge asshole. stick in your mouth. Yeah, huge fucking stick in my mouth. Loves uh, a big stick. You want to do Bellas? Yeah, absolutely. Bellas roast beef, as you know, king of it, king of the beefs, the best. One two one one Osgood Street, North Andover, Bellas, uh, NA dot com, not Narcotics Anonymous, as we know. Yep. Um, Listen to me. My buddy Sully listens. He's a Dorchester kid. Drove up there earlier this week. He got a super and a big beef. He's not a... Listen, his name is Sully. He's a big Samoan kid. He was adopted early in life. The kid's a fucking... Built like a brick shit house, as my mother used to say. And uh, for, for you to take down one super is a feat in itself. And then you take down a big... You're in, a, you're in a different class. If you are in that class, I just came out with a sandwich this week, right? The professor. The professor. The professor. 25 ounces? 24 ounces of beef on a six-inch fucking onion roll. Dude, this thing is served on a pizza platter, I believe. It's it, it's not for the, what is it? Faint, the of, f- hot. faint of hot. There you yeah. go. That's the one I was looking for. It's like Brendan was reading my mind because I was going to butcher <laughs> that thing. Uh, BellasNA.com, North Andover, Harry, Sandra, the best in the business. Tell them that we sent you. All right. The place is well, unbelievable. Guys, it's unbelievable. It's the best, there. and they're, they're unbelievable people. Ben Franklin Print Company. Then we'll get to voicemails. <clears throat> um... 978-624-7341. You know they do all our shit, right? Um, unfortunately, I am. I, we're going to have to get new hoodies because Billy needs a hoodie. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was hoping to buy one here today. Yep. So the hoodies are awesome. I'm wearing one right now. Um, 177 North Main Street, Building 600, Unit 11, Middleton, Mass. They're sh- way better than print. Uh, way more than print, sorry. They are, like like I said, they're not your cheapest option. That's a good thing because you're, you're going to be wearing a gilded piece of shit. And you look, those like, if you you look like a piece of shit. They have those if you they need them. They can make them if you want them. I don't recommend them. I recommend talking to Joe, getting the best quality. I think these are Element hoodies. Is that that's who makes them? Yeah. Um, I went to the Celtics the other night. I bought a hoodie. And I'm like, I opened I'm like, Element, sick. I'm like, nice. I know it's a good hoodie. So, anyways, this thing has been washed literally like a thousand times. Yeah. And is is perfect. Looks just as good as the day, the day I got it. So, um, go see them. And talk to them and see what that's real quick about the golf tournament. I'm finalizing that shit this week. Um, we just had to figure out the Venmo and stuff. And I was had people in from out of town. Work has been crazy. So this week I'm going to get on that and get that done. So I'll, we'll have updates for people on that stuff this week. Um, and I think that's it uh, for that stuff. All right, let's do voicemails. Sweet. Uh, you never know. If you're here, Can you I might. Above table before you yeah, go? you might hear yourself on. Voicemail. That was a you great draft, by the way. Yeah. That was an awesome draft. And you might not want to hear yourself on a voicemail. But, but you gotta. You gotta. By the way, that voicemail that he's complaining about, fucking great voicemail. Yeah. Can everybody hear? Nope. Oh, yeah, buddy. Yep. We're good. All right. Yep. Listen, you motherfuckers. <laughs> I love you so much. I want to make love to you. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a weird way to start this. Is that it? What happened? (laughs) Are we still on the air, Brendan? (laughs) Technical difficulties. Fuck! (laughs) I'm just going to keep recording. I feel like my father right now when I have to fucking call Comcast for him. Why is this technology doing this to me? (laughs) (laughs) It's the laugh of a madman. I love you. (laughs) (laughs) So then you left another one, Greg. Did I hang up? Yeah. I got a happy Sunday, boys. Oh, no. I did leave another one. Would you rather be part of like Chumba Wumba or Marcy's Playground or some other band that made some one hit wonder? Or would you rather be cast in a movie ten times as a lemon like White Dog in Hangover? <laughs> also, Shitsy. Shitsy. Back in the back in the booze for a couple of weeks, and now you can't even make your son's seven fifteen hockey game? I was there. Where were you? What's going on? Unbelievable. See ya. That was it? Yeah. Get to the point, Evan, will you? <laughs> I was smoking. Oh. Sorry. I was smoking a fucking pork butt. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? I got to fucking fight in the grill. That was last week, right? Yeah, that was Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. You got to provide. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Don, screwing everything up. Listen, you guys. The show, it just gets better. You guys keep having good guests on. My God, do I feel connected to you. I feel, I feel there's like a tension in the air where we're just connected, where I'm at home fumbling with my fucking device and headset over here, okay, trying to leave you people a voicemail for your podcast, and I'm in my closet right now because my kids are all fucking up and crazy. It's not bedtime yet. It's after dinner. It gets wild when you have three small children, okay? I got fucking unicorn masks in here. I had sex in this fucking walk-in closet today. I did. It's been a great day. I wanted to cap it by telling all of you, all three of you beautiful men, to keep on going and keep making this a great podcast for the people. Fuck you, Jump Town. <laughs> all right, can you pause? <laughs> yeah. The first call, I was jacked up. I'm at, I'm at home, and I'm like, I got to just, I, I was listening to the podcast. I, headphones on with three kids running around, you know, pissing off my wife. And I just felt connected, and I had to make the call. Well, I go to do it. I get this new set of headphones, Bluetooth headphones. Oh, yeah. It, uh, it just keeps tripping back and forth to me in between, like, the regular phone. It was a, it was a disaster. Yeah, I had yeah. an old person fucking moment. <laughs> and then I was, I was going to ask you to not play it. I'm glad you fucking played it. It's a train wreck. And then I immediately call back. I don't know how that guy got in there in between my two calls. But then I tried to call back and save it. Yeah, I don't know how that happened either. All right. This was easy for me. I'm going strictly TV oh, yeah. shows. Uh, I got the chick from Weeds. I got the the chick from Modern Family with the huge can. <laughs> Aunt Becky was oh, let's go. probably the top pick for me. We're going Charlotte from Sex in the City and Mother of Dragons, Daenerys. That's Tiger. a great one. Great list. Out who's the top five. Mohan. No, got who's a couple the of badasses. Got a couple of skinny girls. You got a huge with a girl with huge tits. You know, you got to sprinkle the infield. I need my harem to be. Um, Diverse, so hopefully you guys went uh, TV shows. I feel like it's easier than movies. See ya. It's a good Listen, list. It was a great voicemail. He was like complaining yeah, that, that he was screwed great. up I that or was something. Great. Unless he's one of the other ones uh, from Game, Game, of Game of Thrones. Oh, never seen it. The Mother of Dragons. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, Daddy, stop drinking. We're the coolest bitches around here. Is that someone's kid? It's gotta be Adi. That can't be no, Adi, though. Adi's, that, Adi's like, voice than that. yeah, he's Tommy's age. I don't know who the fuck that was. You want to hear it one more time? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Daddy, stop drinking. We're the coolest bitches around here. Can't no, even understand what the no, end of that is. We're he's the coolest bitches it. around here. Oh. I don't know who it is, though. I don't know. It's not one of my kids. I can tell you that much. It's the only thing I care about. All right. Yo, it's your man, Adam Jump Jump Town. Just wanted to call him and say what's going on. Everybody. Um, hope you guys are having a good show there. I heard you got the misfit members of Corn who couldn't make it on today. I wish. Um, I tell you what, it looks like Pinhead a little bit. It looks like Freak is literally on a leash, but all of a sudden he buried his head in the sand and came up a beautiful, colorful unicorn. I love him. <laughs> We don't know what we do straight up fraud that you made out of him. He's such a gift, man. <laughs> He's the best. He's the best. All right, long time, first time. Here we go. Hot moms. We're going Catherine O'Hara from Beetlejuice. Ooh, good that one. Crazy red hair and those bright blue eyes. She'll give you a ride for fucking, you'll remember. Okay, next one. The mom from Poltergeist. Oh, she ooh. Smokes weed. Good call. Yeah, she's smoking. And that great scene with her in her underwear mm -hmm. getting pulled around the room. Pretty hot. <laughs> Next, I know that scene. Three. Get for mom. Come on. There you go. That's an easy one. Let's go. Number two, sitting Connie Britton from Friday Night Lights. There you go. Ultra hot. Great minds think alike. Smoking. Smoke show. All day long. And number one. Knuckle babies all day on this one. Sophia Vergara as Gloria. You know who this is? Fuck. Let's go. Brian Block. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Glad another good text list. He's like, I was kind of cocked when I left. left the thing. He's, like, he's like, if it's not good, don't play it. And I'm like, I'm just playing, playing it anyway. So uh, <clears throat> if you do leave something. I picked out that accent that right away. Terrible. Yeah, that could have been terrible. Um, yeah. Brian Box accent. 
Brian Block is. You can yeah, tell. He's the OG corker, one of the best to ever do it. Voicemail um, thing's brilliant. I love that you guys let the listeners do yeah, that. Yeah, I love awesome. voicemails. It's, it's my favorite part. Of, it's great. It's my favorite thing. I thought yeah. for yeah, like, We usually in. get like six to seven a week. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's so good. By the way, here's a question. Inside baseball, for the people who really have pulled in the corner and been listening since the beginning, I think Doctor Strange has left us. Yeah, I think, I think he's left us. Like, he left us that last one, which was a great voicemail about all the Chinese food places and Bill Recca. Yeah. And then I think we started to get maybe close to sniffing out where he might live geographically. And he got scared. And he got nervous or something. Yeah. I mean, Dr. Strange, if you're still with us, we'd like you to call in. At least just, I was shocked that he didn't, like, after Bobby Froyo did all those picks and they were all wrong, like the football games, yeah. I was just waiting for him to pummel. You know what <laughs> I mean? So, anyways, miss, the, miss you, Dr. Strange, if you're out there. We love you. Um, all right, so we're going to do Patreon next. Yep. Uh, and then, um, what else do we have coming up? We got, uh, next week's the 100th show. Yeah, there it is. 100 show, Century Mock. What's up? Bingo. Motherfucker. Congratulations. Seems yeah. like. That's awesome. Sounds like a lot. What episode yeah. did you join at? 69. Yeah. Wow. Sounds I like, mean, a, a, sounds like a lot of shows to not That's be famous fate. yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a lot of shows to not be Joe Rogan yet. Yeah. So, um, maybe make some phone calls if you're out there. If you know somebody. What's the, what's the topic for... Number we one, gotta discuss that. One hundred. Yeah, I don't know. We gotta discuss. Leave it to the um, people, or are we just gonna? How about open eating fucking canned mushrooms in the in the supermarket, yeah, walking around like a psycho? That was the wild. Mush- I love mushrooms. So I didn't even know that mushrooms. that was an option. Canned, in life, bro. I had no clue that you could just like you open can't. a can of mushrooms. You can't. Well, for you one, can't. they never used to have the pulse. They have the pulse yeah. now. Yep. Just wild. so you know. Yeah, so you know. you but don't you still gotta heat that shit hey, up? No, 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 fuck that. You Danny, see them out the can? The canned mushrooms is your one off the wall draft pick. Like you're walking through the market, you got all those fucking <laughs> options. You went for canned mushrooms. Yeah. That's how we feel when you draft an outlier. Well, so I, that's why I said because it. I go. Am you I did. pregnant right you now? Like, like it, I was like, I just want mushrooms right now. I just you, popped it open, like, started eating them. I love that he just. Uh, and you know what's funny about this? Here's a pretty funny story. And. Remember, I had a Malcolm X hat, so I do this imitation of this guy. Uh, changes, there's bro. no racism in it, um, Perfect. at least in my view. It's just trying to sound like what he sounded like. I, we used to live in Milton for a couple of years, and the only stop shop that was nearby was in Dorchester, right? And so I would go down there and shop there. Now, great stop shop over there. Like, I was one of the only, like, six white people that used to shop in the stop shop, right? So what I used to do, I was at the fattest I ever was. So when I would shop there, I would go over to the candy aisle, and I'd fill up, like, a big thing of, like, Swedish fish and shit, and I'd just walk through the place just chugging it, right? Yeah. Just eating it. And then I'm like, I gotta get out of here. So I'm like, I got a mouth fucking full. I look like a squirrel, right? This black guy goes, whoa, man! He's like, save some of that shit for us! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and I'm like, look at this fat white shithead walking down the fucking thing with all this <laughs> Swedish fish coming out of my ears. Um... All right, so we got a hundred show. Oh, my birthday's on Tuesday. I think I'm going to Bella's for lunch. Oh, baby. Yeah, and I think I'm going to Double Bowl for dinner. Have you been there yet? No. It's good? Yeah. I no. went there with some guys, but all of Fergal's guys are always there drinking beers. McGrath um, is always there. McGrath loves it. Yeah, I'll probably see him Marcus, there. Marcus Chabacus is always there. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Chabak. Um, <laughs> I got to work I, Tuesday, so. I can't believe the. No beef. <laughs> Thickle back, dude. Yeah. Pickleback is unbelievable. <laughs> Look at this, Jason McGrath. <laughs> perfect. So perfect. And we're going to have to make up a song for that, I think, too. Yeah. Um, He's a beauty. Thanks for coming on, Billy. Absolutely. You'll come on again, An right? An honor to be here. Thank you, you so now, much. You, it's great. You have easily earned yourself into the rotation. Yeah. I, would, I just uh, want to make sure that this is somewhere where I can see it at some point. In the background, is, yeah. I will feel so honored yes. if I see that horn. Yes, that is going studio. to be... Uh, I, I got a place for it. I got a place. This for has it. been on a lot of people, a lot of beefers. Yeah, Dan Bob, Christmas party. That was shit funny. Went south. Yep. Yeah, but that I, was amazing. But I did use a Clorox wipe, just so you know. So <laughs> if the kid puts on something, you're good. It doesn't okay. smell like puke anymore. No, it shouldn't. <laughs> um, you know, I'm gonna do him wait till like one in the morning and go to Tommy's room and just walk in with that mask on and shake him, fucking see what he does. <laughs> Film it. Um, this right. will be worn by people if you drink around each other yeah. with yeah. these masks. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. School vacation week is here, by the way. Yeah. Um, God bless us all. Oh. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. So we do Patreon next week's the hundredth episode. You know what? Send us in draft ideas if you want. Maybe we'll do a draft. Um, Off the cuff. I mean, yeah, maybe. But yeah, um, I don't know. We'll discuss it. But I'll post something on Monday or Tuesday. Um, all right, peace. We love you. Uh, please go to Bella's and eat roast beef sandwiches and then be awesome. Bye. <laughs>